a 7-5 victory versus the Vaqueros. One heck of a game, no doubt. It was a quiet first inning, but then they started putting up runs, both teams there in the third, and then after that it was UIW who just took the cake, ended up with a 7-5 result against UTRGV, but... You know, that's the tough part about preseason is you never know what's going to happen. You want to get some rotation in, test your depth, and uh, sometimes that results in a loss. But I think, really, you got to look at the, the specifics and see what pieces of those games that you lost, where the bright spots are, and what you can take into the next. And I think they did that with UTRGV. Yeah, they got some good help from the middle of the order. Ryan Scott, Matt Marlowe, and J.D. Gregson. Two for three day for Gregson with a double and a triple and two RBIs. Ryan Scott, two for three with two doubles, scored two times, two RBIs, and also had two walks. Prairie View A&M coming off a loss in Houston versus Rice, six to one yesterday. They will look to bounce back after only having two hits versus the Owls, one being a home run. And we'll try to stop their five game losing streak. We'll take a break here from San Antonio when we come back, first pitch between the Cardinals and the Panthers. Live sports. ESPN Plus Originals. If lawn care were easy, everyone would do it, as well as True Green does it. In just three easy steps, True Green's online tools help customize a treatment plan for you. Our science-driven expertise ensures your custom, nutrient-rich treatment works to deliver a greener, healthier lawn. And it's all backed by the True Green Guarantee. Our experts will make sure you're happy with your lawn. Guaranteed. It's time to trust your experts at True Green. Go online to get 50% off your first application. This is Litter Robot, the highest rated self-cleaning litter box that removes the chore of scooping and helps you have a cleaner home. After your cat exits, Litter Robot automatically cycles, separating the clean litter from the dirty clumps, dropping them into the tightly sealed drawer below, meaning your cat always has a fresh bed of litter. Litter Robot is perfect for single or multi-cat households, and its sleek appearance allows you to place it anywhere in your home. Never scoop again with Litter Robot. With Nintendo Switch, I don't have to hear, Mom, just a few more minutes. Ready? Mm -hmm. They can play it in the living room and in the car. It does both. Nintendo Switch, it's two things in one thing. Penguins Bruins at 3 on ABC and ESPN+. Plus. On the bump for the Cardinals to start out this Wednesday afternoon. Is going to be a right-handed number 19, Jarrett Coiner, getting his second midweek start of the season. Sophomore right-handed pitcher from Pearland, Texas, went to Lutheran South Academy out there in Pearland. Four strikeouts so far in three innings pitch, three walks and one hit given up so far. Looking to add to the stat sheet today. Spent a little bit of time here with UIW in 2023. Three innings pitch there, so again, a good opportunity to just Add more innings as you go. And the first pitch is high for ball one, and we are underway from Sullivan Field. Michael Smith, Jr., the first batter for the Panthers. That one low as well. Working the battery with Garrett Coiner is J.D. Gregson. Get you rest of the Cardinal defense after this pitch this one outside for ball three so still trying to find the zone here to the lead off Michael Smith Jr. on the corners Ryan Scott at first Ryder Hernandez at third as Coiner finds the inside corner for strike one up the middle 
Weldon Sherrill getting the start at shortstop. Tyler Cowan at second. 3-1, deep fly ball into center. Kaylee looking back, and he runs out of room. Goodbye. A solo shot for Michael Smith, Jr. One swing of the bat, and the Panthers are on the board. Man, just like that, one heck of a way to start a game, especially you're away. I, I think that's one heck of a way to set a tone, Sam. Took advantage of the hitter's count. Saw a 3-0 fastball for a strike and did not miss on the 3-1. And a ball to Garrett Weiss, the center fielder. That is Smith's second homer of the year. And quickly down the count, 2-0 and oh, is Coiner. Garrison Weiss, a junior from Brenham, Texas. Off speed in four called strike. The outfield for the Cardinals, Cameron Kaylee in center. And left field, Rob Liddington Jr. And getting the start in right field is Sam Tormos. Back to back sliders. Four strikes. So the count moves to two and two to Weiss. Just a tick under 300 for the season. He went around. And a good bounce back batter for Coiner as he gets Garrett Weiss to chase in the turf for out number one. Better results for Coiner there versus that first batter up. It was tough starting off with a home run. So now the three hole hitter, Michael Burrows, playing left field. Takes the first pitch for a strike. Burroughs hitting 317. Has started 20 games, played in 21. Leads the team in RBIs with 21 and is now tied up for home runs with Smith. 1-1. One, one. That one short of the plate. 2-1 count. The rest of the Panther order on deck in the four hole, Marshall Jonas. Tyron Norris, the designated hitter, will bat fifth. Is in the hole currently. Garland Parker, bat sixth. Mason Highskill, the catcher, will bat seventh. Lee Allen Jr. bats eighth. And Legend Puget will round out the order, batting ninth. So full count now. Two Burrows as that one caught a piece of our home plate umpire, Matthew Hansen. So head coach Ryan Schatzberger of UIW and athletic trainer April Hernandez will take a look and make sure he's okay. The rest of our umpiring crew at first base Thomas Walkviak and Robert Mays at third base. Similar umpires to the midweek game we had yesterday versus UT Rio Grande Valley. Cardinals were able to take the first of two midweeks versus the Vaqueros. He's got the full face mask, very similar to the catching mask of JD Gregson. Good Must have gotten a foul ball right off the noggin. Yeah, good to see some smiles here. And it looks like they're going to actually take him aside. So don't want to speculate anything, but 
they were running that concussion test. Yeah. But of course, you're right. No, no speculation. So, might have a little bit of a break as to see whether we go stick with a three-man crew or if we end up having to lose Matthew Hansen to make sure he's all right. Really unfortunate for him there. It is such a beautiful day for baseball. You can see those flags blowing in the wind in the back there. So far it's 80 degrees, feels like 81, 49% humidity. Wind blowing at nine miles per hour, those flags donning beautifully towards the south southeast. Yeah, be a more of a crosswind with this field from right field to left field. So, still a hitter's ballpark when the wind is blowing like it is. We'll take a break as we step aside, try to figure out. What will be happening on the umpire's end? But it's an early 1-0 lead off the bat of Michael Smith Jr. Still in the top of the first when we return. University Credit Union has been serving students, employees, and alumni of the university community for more than 70 years. We've got plenty of moves that benefit our members, like the lowest loan rates in the nation guarantee, educational resources, personalized savings and investing advice, and 24-7 online and mobile banking. Plus, our virtual assistant, Royce, is always happy to deliver an assist. University Credit Union, the winning choice. Learn more and join today at ucu.org. Get ready for an exhilarating experience at the 2024 Jersey Mike Southland Basketball Championship presented by Explore Louisiana. Make your way to the Legacy Center in Lake Charles March 10th through the 14th to witness the intense competition as the top eight men's and women's teams in the Southland buy to cut down the nets and punch their tickets to March Madness. Secure your tickets today at southland.org slash tickets. Do not miss the excitement of the 2024 Jersey Mike Southland Basketball Championships presented by Explore Louisiana. Top of the first, Prairie View A&M led the game off with a solo homer from Michael Smith Jr. His second homer on the year. And it'll be a full count when we return to action for Michael Burroughs as we continue to make sure our home plate umpire, Matthew Hansen, is in good health. Let these umpires situate the game as they see fit. Lots of action early here in the season within the Southland Conference. Yesterday, four games on Tuesday. The SLC went three and one in those games. UIW got a seven to five win versus UTRGV. Texas A&M Corpus Christi went into Sam Marcus and got a 6-5 victory versus Texas State, a team that went 2-1 and one in Minute Maid Park, having some thrilling wins versus the Houston Cougars and the Texas Longhorns before falling to the LSU Tigers. Tulane and Nichols were back at it again, another close contact contest between the Green Wave and the Colonels this time in Thibodeau the Green Wave came out victorious once again 14 to 12 lots of runs in that game and then a team that UIW swept in a weekend series Alcorn State played southeastern Louisiana and Lorman Mississippi and SLU won 12 to 2 versus that SWAC opponent. Eight games on deck today for the Southland. This being the first of seven. Nichols has a doubleheader with Southeastern Baptist, a three o'clock first pitch, and then a 6:30 p.m. 
first pitch in Thibodeau. Northwestern State, they're at home in Natchitoches. We'll go up against Louisiana Lafayette, the Raging Cajuns. A good in-state battle between the Demons and the Raging Cajuns. The McNeese Cowboys are on the road. We'll play Louisiana Christian. LSU travels to Hammond. And we'll take on the Lions. 6 p.m. first pitch there. So a big home game for Southeastern Louisiana. Lamar and Stephen F. Austin from Nacogdoches, Texas. A 6.30 p.m. first pitch. And that one used to be two Southland Conference teams. Stephen F. Austin now in a different conference, but renew their rivalry. And New Orleans will be in Mobile, taking on South Alabama. When you look at these Southland teams, a lot of good starts for uh, all these nine schools. Nichols, the first two double-digit wins at 11-3. and three. Southeastern and UIW both at nine and four, all but two teams don't have winning records, that being Northwestern State at four and eight, and Texas A&M Corpus Christi at seven and eight. It's a very competitive league throughout. Extremely competitive, and it's always hard to say in preseason because so many of those wins are dependent on who you're playing, what conferences they're coming for. Are you playing easy teams, hard teams? What's the strength of schedule like? And uh, But what we've seen from UIW has been some really spectacular stuff. We talk about this every time. They played Texas A&M. It's a big powerhouse that they were the hold up there against. Um, you know, they're going to play UT here coming up pretty soon. They've uh, just recently got back to their winning ways against the WAC team that we saw yesterday. Uh, so, you know, I think they have really set themselves up for success here this preseason. And I think the losses that they've had, the very few were warranted and the few that they've won um, were also totally earned. Yeah, nine and four on the young season is UIW. They were picked fourth in the Southland Conference baseball preseason poll Nichols had 14 first place votes projected to repeat followed by Lamar and New Orleans to round out the top three McNeese Texas A&M Corpus Christi 5-6 Southeastern Louisiana with a new coach 7th Northwestern State 8 and HCU projected to finish 9th a lot of talent in this league. It was very competitive. You look at just what it took last year in that tournament. Even the regular season, UIW finished 28 and 26 overall. In conference play, they were 14 and 10. They had a shot to finish within the as high as one going into the last day and could finish as low as seventh. That was just how close the league was going into not just the final weekend, but the very final game of conference play. Right, and I think we can expect nothing less here again this season. Um, the hardest part is when you finish top one or two and then your name is circled on the sheet. Everyone's going to be playing their best ball against you, and so you got to bring your best, too. Yeah, Nichols finished 15-9. and nine. UIW 14-10 and 10 did win their last Sunday game versus Texas A&M Corpus Christi on the road, but then fell in two straight games in the conference tournament. New Orleans and Lamar finished the regular season 13-11 and 11 apiece. McNeese and Northwestern State finished at 12 and 12 as well as Texas A&M Corpus Christi all at 12 and 12 those were the seven that made the conference tournament UIW faced off with Northwestern State in their first game 
fell to the Demons in a low-scoring battle and then lost to the McNeese Cowboys, who were hosting last year's conference tournament. So they will try to better what they did last year, breaking lots of records, a winning season, offensive records that so far with what we've seen, we are could be seeing some more records being broken. We'll take another timeout as we are still awaiting the umpire change. 3-2 count here in the top of the first. One out and one across for Prairie View A&M. Question, what would you get with almost 750 bucks? Easy, I, I'd buy a, a smartwatch like that guy. Makes sense, use that GPS for your poor sense of direction. Excuse me? My grandfather was a homing pigeon. My internal compass is genetic. Must have skipped a generation. Uh, I'm a walking GPS. Okay, which way is north? Okay, that's up, not north. I should get the watch. Switch to Progressive and you could save hundreds to spend on whatever you dream up. Choice Hotels is a family of brands that helps you get the most for your money so you can be any traveler you want to be. You could be a free hot breakfast hero in a comfort hotel. Yes! That's how you waffle! Mr. This Script got a plot twist at a Radisson Hotel. A business big leaguer. Go for key. Even the ultimate pool float inflator. With 22 brands and the best value for your money, Choice Hotels has a stay for any you. Stay twice and get a free night when you book direct at choicehotels.com. Gotta get the corners. One zero lead here on the road for Prairie View A&M. A good start to the game for the Panthers as they have lost five straight. Coming into San Antonio, trying to get back in the left side of the dash column. Six and six on the year. Coming into this season, we're picked to finish second in the SWAC in the SWAC West Division, to be specific, behind Grambling State. They got three first-place votes to finish first in the West. Picked to finish ahead of Southern, Texas Southern, Arkansas Pine Bluff, and Alcorn State. UIW will see plenty of the SWAC West. They've already played a three-game set, winning all three versus the Alcorn State Braves. will take on Texas Southern in a three-game set this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Two midweeks versus Prairie View A&M. And then they will get to play Southern in Baton Rouge April 10th at 6 p.m taking on the Jaguars. They were able to sweep them last season. They played Grambling a year ago and put up a lot of runs there in a game they traveled to once again. Won 19-3 April 19th in Grambling, Louisiana. That is something... Coach Schatzberger likes to do is when they go to Louisiana for a road conference matchup, they'll play a quick midweek game just to make sure they got the blood and competitive juices flowing. They did that before taking on Northwestern State University there in Natchitoches. It was actually their first conference loss of that season. They had taken two of three at home versus HCU, two of three on the road versus SLU, two of three versus Nichols, and then two of three versus Lamar as the first series loss was to the Demons. They only lost two all year, one on the road in Natchitoches, and then their final 
home series versus New Orleans. They split the first two and then lost the rubber match. And we do have our umpiring change. So we lost Matthew Hansen. Hopefully he's doing okay. It looks like Robert Mays is now our home plate umpire. Thomas Walkbiak, our first base umpire, will stay there at first. Robert Mays moves from third to behind the plate. So a long delay, and we're just about ready to get things back underway. Got to be tough for both sides when you have to take that bit of a long break, you know, especially if you've got some momentum going, you want to just keep things moving along. And especially if you're the pitcher having to start up all over again, that's tough. So quite the long first inning. First pitch was at 2.05 and the first pitch after the break runs inside to Michael Burroughs. So it'll be a walk to the three hole hitter. Now one on one out with one across. Marshall Jonas to the dish. Get his 13th start. Quickly down 0-2, 293 hitter, seven RBIs, five extra base hits of his 12 on the season. The 0-2 fastball runs high, changes the eye level there of Jonas. Slider just misses. Trying to pretty that one up behind the plate was Gregson. Did not get the call there. 2-2. Two -two. Another slider. Caught in a rundown there is Burroughs. Had a large secondary and the pickle drill Able to retire, Michael Burroughs got caught in no man's land. So it'll be a caught stealing. A two, four, three put out. And now one strike away from getting out of the first. Coiner rings him up, strike three called. His second strikeout of the inning. An inning that lasted almost half an hour. And we are through the first half of the first. UIW will get a crack in the bottom half. Oh, here comes the bread guy. Ugh, don't you ever get sick of bread? How dare you? Come on. If you save nearly $750 like this, imagine what we could splurge on. Oh, like sourdough. No, the good stuff, like blueberries. Uh, and strawberries? Exactly. Raspberries, blackberries, cranberries, okay. elderberries, we don't need to name all the berries. Goji berries, Halle Berry. I'm just kidding. Mm-hmm. But I love her. Switch to Progressive and you can save hundreds to spend on whatever you dream up. Hotels.com rewards every stay with one key cash. What does I call it? To go home to Serbia fund. Is that an invite? Mm. Today, I'm... <laughs> um... Let's dive in.
To the bottom of the first we go. Prairie View A&M scores one on the solo homer from their leadoff right fielder, Michael Smith Jr. And taking the mound to start the game is the right-hander, Camden Farmer. Farmer, a sophomore from Woodlands, Texas, spent some time at Grayson College. So this is gonna be his third appearance today. Prior to this, he spent some time against Houston State and against Texas State. Just a few innings there, and then looking to add to the stat sheet here. Yeah, he has not fared well in the two starts. Has only gone one and two thirds in those two appearances. 0 and two on the year. Has given up 11 runs, all of them earned. Nine hits, three walks, one strikeout. And of those nine hits. Five of them have been extra bases. Two doubles, two triples, and a home run. Cameron Kaylee to lead off. First pitch is over for a strike. He's got a good head of hair there on the mound as well. He is Farmer. Got the man bun working. Hat can't stay on his head as that one misses out of the zone. Saw a lot of hats flying yesterday too for UIW and it's a tough one. Not sure if it's <laughs> the wind or if it's the amount of effort that he's putting into every single pitch. Might have to find a way to tighten up the screws there on that hat. <laughs> Some bobby pins. Saw that with Dalton Beck yesterday, Ryan Slotzhauer a year ago. They finally found a hat that fits him. Kaylee on the 2-1, fisted and caught by the second baseman, Lee Allen Jr. So despite all the distractions there from the hat here. Camden Farmer able to retire. Kaylee for the first out. Rob Liddington Jr. at the plate. Playing left field for the Cardinals. Sees one inside. The rest of the incarnate word order goes as follows. Dalton Beck DHing today. And the on-deck circle batting third. Ryan Scott bats clean up in the hole currently. That one in the turf there. J.D. Gregson will bat fifth. Sam Tormo sixth. Ryder Hernandez seventh. Tyler Cowan eighth. And Weldon Sherrill rounds out the order batting ninth. Rob Liddington, a junior from Phoenix, Arizona, went to Paradise Valley High School and spent some time at Paradise Valley Community College. 2-1 count now, two for five yesterday was Liddington. A single and a double came around to score once as well. Farmer. Misses high there. Goes all the way to the backstop as Mason Highskill is behind the plate. In the infield for the Panthers at third base, Garland Parker. Shortstop, Legend Fouguet. Lee Allen Jr. at second. And Marshall Jonas at first. That's the fastball to run the count full is Farmer. In right field, Michael Smith Jr. In left field, Michael Burroughs. And in center is Garrett Weiss. So the full count now to Liddington. And Farmer steps off. Pitch clock was close to zero. 
actually showing zero right now, which would have been a walk. And so they are going to award Liddington first base. Quite a bit of confusion there, it looks like. From Farmer. And Farmer's actually going to talk to first base umpire Thomas Walkaviak and ask for an explanation. Yeah, those are the new pitch clock rules. If it hits zero and you have not thrown the pitch, it is a ball no matter what the count is. It could be an 0-0 count. It could be a 3-2 count like it was. First pitch outside. This is for ball one to Dalton Beck. Same goes for the batters. If they're not in at a certain time, it's going to be an automatic strike. You've seen some innings end on an 0-2 batter pitch clock rule call. Chances to tie or win the game. They're at the MLB and college level. 1-1. One, one. That one misses. So... 2-1 count now to Dalton Beck. He and Cameron Cayley have started in all 14 for the Cardinals. I chopper in the 3-4 hole, snaring it and overthrowing his man. Good backup from the catcher. Mason Highskill, a snow cone by Lee Allen Jr. It was going to be a tough play over through his first baseman in Marshall Jonas. As it stands right now, it's going to be ruled a hit. It was going to be a tough play, but he overthrew him by a mile, which kind of begs the question, do you give that a hit or do you give that an error? Yeah, definitely would have been difficult to make up for that. Can applaud the effort. He's going for it. And the first pitch gets away from high skill. All the way to the backstop. And both Beck and Liddington move up 90 feet. Cardinals don't really care how you get on or how you get across. They just want more runs than the other team when it's all said and done. Ryan Scott at the plate. Two in scoring position. Two for three day yesterday. Also reached two other times on walks. His two hits were doubles. Hitters count 2-0. That one, this is outside. So this will be an interesting call here for UIW to give Ryan Scott the green light. That 517, 15 for 29 so far this season. It's not close to the zone as it's a four pitch walk. The second free pass issued by the Panthers. Now the bases are juiced for J.D. Gregson. Good spot to be in, and just like that, a mound visit. Head coach Antoine Riggins in his ninth year as the head coach of the Panthers. Also has assistant coach Brian White and Happy Macon. Also call him Happy. Brian White's been with him for all four, excuse me, all nine years with Riggins, Anthony, Happy, Macon, joined shortly after four years there in Prairie View. Just a quick mound visit with Camden Farmer. First pitch to Gregson, blocked up in the turf by High Skill. 
Bowling turf, infield, and foul ground. The outfield, all natural grass. Warning track is dirt. 1-0. That one misses the zone again. So six straight out of the zone for Farmer. Gregson getting his 10th start and appearance. The 14th game for UIW this season. To O'Hack. Fouled away. Gregson batting 324. Has nine extra base hits of his 12 this season. Four doubles, three homers, and two triples. UIW leads the entire country in triples with 11. Next highest is Radford and Tennessee Tech with nine apiece. UIW also ranks top 10 in runs scored. Ball away from getting their first today and It'll be the third walk of the inning for Camden Farber. An RBI walk for Gregson as Liddington ties this one up at one. Birds perched up, sitting pretty right now. Bases loaded once again. And this might have been one of the easier runs that they've collected so far. So now Sam Tormos. Comes to the plate, getting his first start of the season. Has played in eight games for UIW. Goes after the first pitch. Can't handle it is the third baseman, Garland Parker, off his glove, and everyone is safe. A 2-1 lead now for UIW. Ride along here. UIW an offensive powerhouse, but really haven't had to do much here. That one's going to be counted as an E5 against Parker. Bex could have even been ruled an error. It's going to be a tough play either way for the second baseman, Lee Allen Jr. Trying to get back at first as he flies down the line in the turf, blocked up by high skill, doing a good job there. You can actually see exactly where each pitch that lands in the turf land because of those black pebbles moving. The little rubber beads, yeah. Hernandez sends this one into right. It's slicing and it gets out of play, just out of the reach of Smith Jr. It's a good hustle. So a one two count now to Hernandez. 11th game he's played in, eighth start. One for three yesterday, he reached two times, once on a walk and a single his last time to the plate. And rung up for strike three. He gave it a late check swing. He must have broken just enough to get back into that zone. So out number two for Farmer. Base is still loaded for Incarnate Word as Tyler Cowan will take his shot. Just low. Yeah, just low enough to get into that zone. Finished at the belt. But a lot of late break there from Farmer. First pitch to Cowan out of the zone for ball one. Betting 207 on the season. 12th start and game he has played in. That one over and across four strike one. An 
Another Paradise Valley Community College transfer. One of the hot spots for Coach Schatzberger and company when recruiting at the JUCO ranks. As a freshman, Tower Cowan added 318 for the Pumas. Seven doubles, two triples, a home run, and nine RBIs in 39 games. Count runs to two and two. Tormos at first, Gregson at second, and Scott at third. Already two across. Step off there with five seconds to go. So the count stays at two and two. That one catches a piece of the arm guard. It's the ninth time Tyler Cowan has been hit by a pitch. He was hit twice yesterday in a one for two day. We didn't even have to say anything about it either. There's we been did some not. speculation that potentially we were manifesting this and I will have to say that he's just a magnet for that baseball. Coming into the game, he was tied for seventh in all of college baseball with eight hit by pitches. That one being his ninth, gets an RBI on it as well. His fifth <laughs> RBI of the season. It's not as crazy as Sacramento State's junior outfielder, Matt Massalingio, who was hit, who's been hit 11 times this season, seven of his first eight plate appearances, he was hit. My goodness. But it's felt like Cowan's been hit all the time, <laughs> especially when we're here at Sullivan Field. What I want to know is who has the most RBIs from being hit by pitch. I feel like that needs to be a category that's observed because at that point, it's like, okay, we need him here to make sure he gets hit and <laughs> makes this walk. The, the baseball gods are trying to teach him a lesson, I guess. Well, he scored 10 times. He hasn't gotten many RBIs from getting hit by a pitch, but he has come around to score quite a bit. Walden Sherrill getting his third start of the season. Faces a two and one count, fouls this one off the back netting. The sixth game he has played in. Four for nine on the season, three RBIs. Two two count with the bases juiced for Cheryl. Pitch home, that one low. And the count runs full. Cheryl was one for four against Villanova on the 16th. Being opening day. Had a good weekend in Monroe, two for two. And one for three. He's come in a couple times as well against the Wildcats on Sunday and Alcorn State as a defensive replacement. Fouls this one off as he checked his swing. Tried to get out of the way of the fastball, so we'll do another payoff pitch. Junior college transfer from Rose State. Trying to drive in some runs. Inside move. And they're going to count it as a pitch clock violation. He had already stepped off the plate. And so that's the second time that's happened this inning against Farmer. And it drives in 
a fourth run for UIW. At what point do you have them take a seat? You know, it looks like there is some uh, movement in the bullpen over there for Prairie View, but his coach still wants to see what he can do. Cardinals have not had to do anything. They've only put one ball into the outfield, and it was caught by the second baseman, Lee Allen Jr., to retire the guy that's at the plate, Cameron Cayley. It was a soft line drive. This one is going to hook foul. The single by Beck was gloved by Allen Jr. just on the doorstep of the outfield. Overthrow to the first baseman. Didn't really matter as Beck got the hit. And then the error when Sam Tormos grounded it to the third baseman. Good eye there on 0 and 2. Not happy with the call. Thought he had rung up Cameron Cayley who was Cam Camden Farmer. So one, two count, two outs. UIW with four across already. Cayley chops this one up the middle. It's gonna be a tough play. And Kaylee beats it out for an infield single. So an RBI single plates the fifth for UIW. And the ball has still not left the infield. Some good speed there from Kaylee to get there in the nick of time. And I think that's the most work they've had to do really in this whole inning. Yeah, the slow chopper. Almost too slow for Legend Fouguet. After that, a high pop-up. This one drifts to the fringe of the outfield. Caught this time by Garland Parker, which will end the first inning officially. 53 minutes have gone by. We are through one. It's a 5-1 lead for UIW here at home. University Credit Union has been serving students, employees, and alumni of the university community for more than 70 years. We've got plenty of moves that benefit our members, like the lowest loan rates in the nation guarantee, educational resources, personalized savings and investing advice, and 24-7 online and mobile banking. Plus, our virtual assistant, Royce, is always happy to deliver an assist. University Credit Union, the winning choice. Learn more and join today at ucu.org. Get ready for an exhilarating experience at the 2024 Jersey Mike Southland Basketball Championship presented by Explore Louisiana. Make your way to the Legacy Center in Lake Charles March 10th through the 14th to witness the intense competition as the top eight men's and women's teams in the Southland fight to cut down the nets and punch their tickets to March Madness. Secure your tickets today at southland.org slash tickets. Do not miss the excitement of the 2024 Jersey Mike Southland Basketball Championships presented by Explore Louisiana. Five runs on two hits, one error, and three left on base in the bottom of the first is a four-run cushion for Garrett Coiner, who has had to wait a long time when he was on the mound in the top half of the first inning as we lost our home plate umpire, Michael Hansen, to a foul ball. That went off his face mask. Hoping for the best for him as he was unable to continue on. Gave a little bit of a delay there in the top half of the first and then in the bottom half. A long time with the bats is UIW. So now corner back on the mound. First pitch for a strike to Tyron Norris, the designated hitter. Norris so far this season, second best hitter at 359. 
getting his 11th start in game he's played in. From Pearland, Texas, went to Galveston College prior to Prairie View A&M. 6'3", 200 junior. 2-1, fastball runs in. So another deep count for Coiner. This one right at the knees. Morris will have to track back into the box. Thought it was ball four. So it's 3-2 to the leadoff here in the top of the second. This one lined into the gap. Right center with Carey off the base of the wall and putting on the brakes there at second. It'll be a leadoff double for Tyron Norris. Just shy of replicating what Michael Smith Jr. did in the top of the first. Well-deserved leadoff double there for him. One heck of a hit just into the right pocket of the field in 2020 through 2023. He had three of those. He had 17 RBIs and was hitting 340. First pitch to Parker and for called strike. Garland Parker, a freshman from Sherman, Texas, went to Denison High School. Plays off the off speed. That one runs inside. 2-1 count now to Parker. Getting his first action as a Panther. First collegiate start and first collegiate appearance here in San Antonio. 2-1. This one lined into center field. That will go to the wall. It'll be an RBI double for Garland Parker. Back-to-back -back doubles for Prairie View a and It's one way to handle business there. Good work there with Prairie View a and Starting to close that gap it was created at the top of this inning. He pummeled that ball straight into the left center gap. Another look here. It was more center field and it was all the way to the wall. Nothing Kaylee could do about it. And it'll be a quick outing for Garrett Coiner, as head coach Ryan Schatzberger has gone to the pen and we'll give the ball to a new Cardinal pitcher. We'll get you the new right-hander when we come back. A 5-2 game here in the top of the second. Live sports. Else? No problem. I like this one. I think he likes me. Here at Papa John's, we know our stuff. So try our garlic epic stuffed crust pizza, made with our iconic garlic sauce flavor, mixed with cheese and hand stuffed into that Papa John's original dough. No one stuffs a crust like Papa John's. Oh, here comes the bread guy. Ugh, don't you ever get sick of bread? How dare you? Come on. If you save nearly $750 like this, imagine what we could splurge on. Oh, like sourdough. No, the good stuff, like blueberries. Uh, and strawberries? Exactly. Raspberries, blackberries, cranberries, okay. elderberries. We don't need to name all the berries. Goji berries, Halle Berry. I'm just kidding. Mm hmm. But. I love her. Switch to Progressive and you can save hundreds to spend on whatever you dream up. Hunter Hargett is the new UIW pitcher. 
Garrett Corner went one plus innings pitched and back to another right hander here in the midweek for the junior from San Diego. 6 2 guy so far has had eight innings pitched, nine strikeouts, seven earned runs so far this season. Really starting to rack up the stats here. Kind of your second guy that you see a lot of times throughout the season. Yeah, it's his fifth appearance. Actually got a start against ULM. Pitched twice versus the Warhawks. The first game on Friday ended up getting delayed all the way to Saturday, making it a double header. A game where you saw both your Friday night, Josh Salinas, and your Saturday guy, Isaiah Savala, pitch in that game. Kind of threw a loop into a lot of the adversity that UIW had to maneuver from. Hargett finished game one and then started game two. Went two-thirds of an inning in game one with a strikeout. Did not give up any hits, walks, or runs. And then went three innings to start the second game of that Saturday doubleheader. Went three innings, three hits, giving up one run, it being an earned run, four strikeouts, and two walks. First batter he will see is Mason Highskill. 2-1 count to high skill. Fouls this one into the side netting. 2-2 two two count. Corner responsible for Parker there on second. Back-to-back -back doubles. Have put a run on the board for the Panthers for the second straight inning. Fastball misses outside for Hargett. And the count runs full. Good to see Prairie View putting in the work here, earning those spots on base. Payoff spoiled there by high skill. So another 3 2 coming from Hargett. set at the belt takes a look at Parker delivers home just misses off the outside corner both Gregson and Hargett kind of sigh a little bit of disbelief they had nailed him for a strikeout looking instead Another base runner for the Panthers. No outs here in the top of the second. Eight-hole hitter Lee Allen Jr. to the plate. Shows the bunt, pushes it down the first base side, and there's no play. Tough ball to get to. Great push bunt there from Allen Jr. Got it past Hargett. Cowan there at second is playing back at double play depth. Can't get to it. Scott's covering first. And the bases are loaded now. Another look. Right, just right into the middle of nowhere. Just couldn't get there off the mound in time. First pitch to Legend Fouquet is high for ball one. So already the third hit of the inning for Prairie View A&M. Playing a little bit of long ball and small ball here early. Big cut and miss for the Panther shortstop.
one one this is high and excuse me this is not legend fuget it is isaac davala junior from austin texas went to elgin high school getting his third start one for 12 on the season swings through that pitch So count runs at two and two. Looking for the first out is Hargett. And just misses outside again. That same spot. That was called a ball to high skill. So a full count, bases loaded, no outs. Swing and a miss, strike three. Hunter Hargett gets a big K against Isaac Davila. And back to the top of the lineup. Michael Smith Jr. homered his first time up. So Love a full count, bases loaded, no out. Look back at that. Swing and a miss, strike three. Just blew the heater by Isaac Davila. One oh there as the off speed misses for Hargit. Slider catches a piece of the outside corner. One and one is the count now. Smith has played in all 13 games for Coach Riggins. Gregson trying to settle down Hargett as he misses outside with the slider. 282 is Smith on the season. This homer was his 12th hit of the year, third extra base hit. Fastball runs inside. Both pitching staffs having some trouble finding the zone. Tough knowing you're going up against a heavy hitter. 3 1. That one gets the call. Michael Smith Jr. will have to check right back in here on the 3 2. Payoff from Hargett. All the way, staying alive is Smith Jr. Picked up his 10th RBI on the home run. Looking for a couple here. 3-2. Spoils this one into the netting. Do it all over once again. Three, two. This one high and deep into center field. That'll cash them in. A grand slam for number 44, Michael Smith Jr. Says so long to the ballpark for the second time today. And it puts Prairie View A&M back on top six to five. Man, talk about earning that score line right now fantastic work there from smith back to back home runs probably got to start putting money on him two plate appearances in the first two innings two home runs 
a solo shot to start off the game. And they're on a 3-2, fouls a couple away, and then makes Connor Hargett pay for missing his spot. Letting the long ball talk. So now five across here in the inning after giving up five in the bottom half of the first. Pulls the slider there to Garrett Weiss. Count runs to one and one. Weiss from Brenham, Texas, went to Blinn College before transferring. Sword there as he goes around, could not hold up his swing. Weiss was second on the team last year in batting average. At a 284. Started all but two games, played in all but one game. Had the most hits with 57, score the most runs with 40. Led the team in doubles and triples as well. 11 doubles, three triples. Fouls off the 2-2. Two -two. Also had 22 RBIs. And at a team high, 34 walks he drew. Struck out his first time up. Staying alive again. Hanging on two and two. Tough to follow Grand Slam. Still doing pretty good with only one out on the board. Able to work the count full. His Weiss. Four hits in the inning. 3 2. This one shot into right. Base hit number five for the Panthers. Really good at bat there from Garrett Weiss. Again, Panthers able to fight off some pitches and then find the gaps on the Balls that are a little bit more able to handle. Two doubles in the inning, two singles. And then the big home run as well by Michael Smith Jr. They're just making UIW pay with some of the pitching. I look back at it here and that is that grand slam. All the way over the fence. Yeah, Hunter Hargett. Let that slider hang a little bit too much. And Michael Smith Jr. sent it out to just about the same exact spot as his first home run. First one runs inside to Michael Burroughs. Converse, Texas, just on the outskirts of San Antonio, went to Judson High School. Sophomore outfielder for the Panthers, up 2-0. and Always fun to play near or at home. Get all your supporters out there watching you. At a 3-16 for Prairie View A&M last year. Played in 40, excuse me, started in 40, 
of the 42 games he played in. 42 hits, 10 doubles, a home run, and 22 RBIs. Off and running is Weiss, and he is gunned down by Gregson. Some solid UIW defense there. When they're in the vicinity of the ball, they're really moving really well with it. It's just, I think the hits so far with Prairie View have just been into the right spots. The right force or not behind it, you know, whether it's a bunt or a big hit, they've done, they've just played their cards right. Not one. Runs outside. Three and one count now. Second runner to be caught stealing by J.D. Gregson today. Michael Burroughs was the first there in that first inning. Swings through the slider. Burroughs got caught in no man's land with his secondary lead. It was an easy rundown drill for UIW. Counts down full. And Burroughs is caught looking. Fourth strikeout for the Panthers today. And Hunter Hargett able to get out of the second frame, not before Prairie View AM responds with five runs of their own. It's a 6 5 game going into the bottom of the second. Question What would you get with almost 750 bucks? Easy. I, I'd buy a, a smartwatch like that guy. Makes sense. Use that GPS for your poor sense of direction. Excuse me? My grandfather was a homing pigeon. My internal compass is genetic. Must have skipped a generation. Uh, I'm a walking GPS. Okay. Which way is north? Okay, that's up, not north. I should get the watch. Switch to Progressive and you could save hundreds to spend on whatever you dream up. <sighs> Rock, paper, scissors for who's on dinner duty? Nice try. I'll get it. <laughs> Need some help? Delicious two-ingredient weeknight dinners. Approved. <laughs> I'm Michael Sarah, and human skin is my passion, which is why I developed this. Sarah V. My cream. Oh, you didn't know? <laughs> Sarah V. Developed with Michael Sarah. You like? <laughs> There's its perfect crossover opportunity. Panthers back with the lead. They pounce on the UIW pitching in that second inning, scoring five runs on five hits, no errors, nobody left on base. And Camden Farmer will try to bounce back here in the second inning after facing 11 Cardinal batters in the first. Many of them getting on from free passes. Only two hits given up in that opening frame. Dalton Beck had one of them, one of two infield singles. First pitch to Beck is high. Beck on the year. Already 20 hits. 21st came in that first inning. Make it 22 for number 12 in black. Dalton Beck stays red hot to start this season, batting over 400 for UIW. Beck firing back and making his way on base. And most cards get on base, things start heating up. Able to shoot it through that 3 4 hole. Nothing Lee Allen Jr. could do to stop that one from getting into right field. The first one to be placed out of the out, out into the outfield. Ryan Scott walked his first time up. Fifteen hits. This year, batting over 500 in his ninth start, 11th game he's played in. 
2-0 count now. Big presence for UIW. How's this one off? 6-2. 225 junior from the colony, Texas. Transferred from Blinn College. Played for the Buccaneers last year. His freshman year played in Dallas for Dallas Baptist as he shoots this one through the 5-6 hole. And it's back-to-back -back singles to start the second for the Cardinals. Been a tough game for Farmer. But I would say giving up a hit is better than a walk. Yeah, you want to throw strikes and if the other team hits them, and that, then they earned it, so to speak. You want to hit your spots, throw strikes as that one misses out of the zone. At least too early on that slider was Farmer. J.D. Gregson now at the plate, also walked and scored his first time up. Fouls this one into the side netty. One and one count. Gregson's been all over the map. Started at Baylor University back in 2021. Appeared in two games for the Bears. And transferred to Grayson College at 361 for the Vikings and 31 games, 12 homers, 10 doubles, and 36 RBIs. From Grayson, he went to Texas A&M and now at UIW over the head of the shortstop trying to score his Beck. It's an RBI single for J.D. Gregson, three to start the inning. And we're all knotted up at six. Good hustle there from Beck. Turned the Jets on. Wasn't exactly a close one, but could have been. Scott stays at second. And we're all square at six apiece. So now Stam Tormos reached on a error by the third baseman. Garland Parker fouls this one into the bleachers just in front of us. Sam Tormos, second year Cardinal, transferred from Houston. Added 194 for UIW, started 10 games, played in 16. Seven hits, all singles last year, also scored seven runs, drove in five RBIs. One of those players that put in a lot of work on, in the offseason. Went down to the Dominican Republic. Stays alive on 0 and 2. Coach said he breathed, eat, and slept all thinking about baseball when he was down there in the Dominican. I believe that. I mean, what else could you do? You're in the Dominican Republic. You should be. Probably Hope we enjoyed, got some good food at least. Probably enjoyed the sun. <laughs> Took a couple hours to enjoy the beach as well, but his main focus was baseball in the offseason. He goes down on strikes for the first out in the second. Strike count number two for Farmer today. Got Ryder Hernandez looking. 
That was the second out of the first inning. Cap flies off. He's got that hair blowing in the wind now. Took, the, took his hair tie out. Yeah, no more man bun. He's letting the flow loose right now. Maybe that's the trick. As an athlete, personally, the way I wear my hair does make a difference. <laughs> I can't As say the same. someone with very long hair. I cannot <laughs> say it the make same. A difference. Can't care what it looks like. Just got to get the job done. He's got some curly hair, too. Mm -hmm. Some luscious locks don't for they say, Camden Farmer. Don't they say curls get the girls? You would know. <laughs> Check swing from Ryder Hernandez. They're going to say he went around. So now a 1-2 count to Hernandez. Scott is at second. Gregson at first. One out here in the bottom of the second. One across already for the Cardinals. This one chopped. And that one's through the 5-6 hole. Scott is safely into home. And it's an RBI single for Ryder Hernandez. Cardinals back on top. Slip and sliding into safe there. Would have made a great photo. Cars right back in it. And, you know, if you had eliminated that first inning from some of those mistakes that Farmer had, this could be a very different result. But uh, I think... Now, as we're making it through two, you can see the talent on both sides. Yeah, Farmer had given up quite a bit of free passes. Bunting his way on is Cowan. He beats the throw. And just like Lee Allen Jr. had a push bunt in the top of the second, Tyler Cowan says he doesn't want to be hit by a pitch anymore. He's going to get a hit himself. An infield bunt single loads him up for Weldon Sherrill. Tell you what, they are making them work. They're getting there, but not without having to put in some serious work. And safe. You can see it there in that playback. Safe all day long. They are really testing Garland Parker there at third. Going after the first pitch is Weldon Sherrill. This will, will be caught there in right field. Everyone trying to tag up. And in safely is Cowan. Everyone moves up an extra bag, and it'll be a sack fly for Weldon Sherrill. He'll get the RBI, and it'll make it an 8-6 game. Haven't had any issues with the ball getting lost in the clouds and the sun and the sky so far past couple games. We saw that back-to-back -back games early on with a lot of these visiting teams with the, the placement of the sun, the direction of the sun, rather. But uh, no one's having problems today. First pitch out of the zone to Cameron Cayley, one for two. Infield single his last time up as he got to bat twice in the first inning. That was the 1-0 away. To your point about Farmer, in that first inning, only gave up two hits, both of them infield singles. All the other base runners were, quote-unquote, free passes. You had four walks, one hit by pitch, and one reach on an error. This inning, a much different story. Everyone to reach for UIW has gotten on on a single. Well, good on Coach Riggins to know what he's got out there. You know, instead of taking them off after a few errors, just letting them play it out, shake off the whatever nerves might be coming up for them with that stuff. 2-1, fouled out of play. That way we get to see his best ball. 
Pitch counts already up to 70. Two two count with two outs. Cowan at second. Hernandez at third. Delivery from Farmer. Floats outside. So a full count now to Kaylee. He will take his walk if they try to pitch around him. 16 on the year. 20 hits and stays right on it. Fouls it off the back netting, so he stays alive. On a full count, Rob Lennington Jr. on deck. 0 for 1, reached on a walk and scored before making the final out of the first inning. 3-2. Slider misses outside, and Cameron Kaylee one of the nation's walk leaders, takes his 17th of the season and keeps things rolling here in the bottom of the second. Loads them up for Liddington. Good spot to walk into here if you're Liddington. So that's walk number five, first here of the inning for Farmer. Over and across four, strike one. Lennington with nine RBIs and four doubles. A one. Lays off the slider there. So a one one count with two outs. Hernandez at third, Cowan at second, and Kaylee at first. An eight six lead. For UIW. Goes after the fastball, misses. Bit on the high cheese, still a one two count. Two outs here in the bottom of the second. Already three runs across for UIW. Looking for more. Swing and a miss there. Strikeout for Camden Farmer. It is his fourth of the game, and it keeps it at a two-run game through two. Lots of runs here in San Antonio. An 8-6 lead for Prairie View and for UIW. See, Home Quote Explorer lets you easily compare home insurance options so you can get what you need without overpaying. Yeah, we spent a lot on this kitchen. Oh, yeah, really high end stuff. Sorry, that's our ghost. Yeah, okay. It's more annoying than anything. Too bad there's mold behind the backsplash. Yep, there's mold. Well, then, let's see if we can save you some money with Progressive. Guess how much I originally paid for this fireplace? 23 bucks. Materials and labor. Just ignore him. You got bamboozled. Choice Hotels is a family of brands that helps you get the most for your money so you can be any traveler you want to be. You could be a free hot breakfast hero in a comfort hotel. Yes! That's how you waffle! A romantic weekend escaper at a Cambria hotel. Or Mr. Get the Party Started. Hey! Be a pool lounger. Or a big room relaxer. With 22 brands and the best value for your money, Choice Hotels has a stay for any you. Stay twice and get a free night when you book direct at choicehotels.com. Gotta get the corners. UIW looking for their first zero on the defensive side. They'll go to their third pitcher of the game, number 11, Larry Westall, in to pitch the sidewinder, senior from Round Rock, Texas. 6'4", 195, getting his third appearance. Bounced back very well from his first appearance against UIC. Went one inning, gave up five hits, five runs, four of them earned. 
two strikeouts versus the Flames. Much better his last time out. Went two-thirds of an innings pitch versus ULM on the road in Monroe. One of those outs being a strikeout. And he will come in to the game here in the third inning. First batter he sees gets to ground out to Tyler Cowan for a 4-3 put out. So Marshall Jonas is now 0 for 2 after striking out looking his first time up. Tyron Norris now, the DH, started things off in the second inning. At the first double there in the second. They appealed to first on the check swing. Said he did not break the plane. So a 1 0 start for Norris. Batted 340 last season as he swings through the slider. 27 starts, 33 games, had 33 hits and 17 RBIs. Another ground ball to Cowan, and easy does it for the Juco transfer. So two quick outs for Larry Westall. Had quite the summer is Westall. A lot of these players will play in collegiate leagues. There's collegiate leagues all over the United States. Even a Texas one, the TCL. One of the teams based down there at Wolf Stadium. Flying Chanclas. Westall, though, went all the way to Alaska. Played for the Natsu Miners there in Palmer, Alaska. And got to face off with one of his old teammates there in the summer, Stephen Lancia, the catcher for UTRGV. Able to meet back up with his old battery partner. IW got the best of Steven Lancia and the rest of the Vaqueros, seven to five, just last afternoon. And Westall, it's a infield pop-up called by Ryan Scott in a one, two, three inning as Westall gets Parker to pop up. First zero on the board as the Panthers are left scoreless in the top of the third. A 8-6 lead for UIW. We'll talk to head coach Ryan Schatzberger about what's transpired when we come back. This is NASCAR driver Tony Breidinger inviting you to make a pit stop at Raising Cane's for craveable, hand battered, cooked to order chicken fingers. Chicken up. Crispy, crinkle cut fries. Hot potato coming through. Buttery Texas toast. Toast walking. And secret cane sauce. Stopping off now. Turbocharge your chicken fingers and get them even faster when you order online or with the Raising Cane's app. Go, go, go! Raising Cane's chicken fingers. One love. <laughs> Raising Cane's is not affiliated with NASCAR. Clean frame for the Cardinals on defense as they hold an 8-6 to six lead and we'll send it down to the Cardinal dugout as Katie Goodman is with head coach Ryan Schatzberger. Unfortunately, some technical difficulties there 
as we cannot hear Katie or Coach Schatzberger. So a new pitcher on the mound for Prairie View A&M, be number 28, Tyson Carlton, a right-hander, 6'5", 198, the sophomore from Allen, Texas. Went to Dallas College Eastville before getting to Prairie View A&M. Faces the meat of the Cardinal Order. Dalton Beck, Ryan Scott, and J.D. Gregson. That one outside. So count runs to one and one. Two for two so far today for Dalton Beck. Scored both times on his singles. Cuts after that one, misses. So one, two count now for Beck. Third different school for Dalton. Junior from Frisco. Started at Grayson College. And then went to Kansas State. Was a two-way player back at Grayson. Pitched yesterday, got the win. Going three innings. Count runs full now. In that one year, had a 4.33 ERA, a 7-4 and four record. Also hit 380 as the Vikings went 38-18. and 18. And we're into the semifinals for Region 5 of JUCO. Earns himself a walk there to start the third. Started off the second with a single. And now the leadoff Cardinal has reached base. For the second straight inning, Ryan Scott has reached both times. A walk and a single. That one on the outside corner. Four strength one. So far this season, Carlton has an 0-1 record. This being his fifth appearance. Has pitched six and two-thirds, given up. 17 runs, only 15 of them earned, 14 hits, 5 strikeouts, 8 walks, 6 extra base hits he's given up, 3 doubles, 3 home runs, batters hitting 412 against him. Ryan Scott quickly down 0-2. Beck at first base has been aggressive on the base pass, keeping a close look at him is Carlton. The 0 2 catches the outside corner for the first strikeout. For Tyson Carlton. So Ryan Scott is retired for the first time today. J.D. Gregson will try to pick him up. Has played copycat with Ryan Scott so far. Both have walked their first time up in the first inning and scored. And then both singled and scored. In the second, swing and a miss there on the first pitch. And then I throw over to check on Beck. He's increased his lead by about a half step. Another throw over, still going in, standing up.
No oven mitt for Dalton Beck when he runs. Not off and running, and J.D. Gregson one hops it into left field. A sharp shot there for the catcher. Back-to-back -back singles for Gregson. And two more aboard for the Cardinals. One out, two on. Sam Tormos looking for his first time, first hit of the game. Two for three in pinch hit opportunities. Has also come in as a pinch runner and a defensive replacement in the seven games he's played. Has scored three runs. So far this season, one of his hits a double and has also driven in an RBI. 2-0, big hack. Fouls it over the netting. So a 2-1 count now. Mentioned him going out to the Dominican Republic over the summer. He's also hit the weight room. Has really filled out since last year. Putting on some LBs. A lot of muscle mass he has added as he fouls this one in the box. So a 2 2 count now to number 29 in black. UIW wearing their black uniforms with white pinstripe pants. Prairie View A&M, and they're all grays with purple lettering. Slider runs inside, does not get the call there from now home plate umpire Robert Mays. So 3-2. High fly ball. That is foul. So another payoff coming from Carlton. Gregson at first, Dalton Beck at second. Checking his Back there, and that one's ball four. It runs all the way to the backstop. So Sam Tormos reaches base safely on the walk. Second time he's been aboard. So now Ryder Hernandez coming off his single last inning. Was stranded there at second base. Cardinals have left the bases loaded each of the first two innings. Liddington being the final batter in both of those innings. Looking for some more RBIs is Ryder Hernandez. 0-1. Slider that runs outside. Good leave there for Hernandez. Stays off the fastball upstairs. So two and one count now. Third year player. First two years at the Division I level with Texas State. Played in only two games as a freshman. 
Only one at bat. As a pinch hitter versus ULM. And a defensive replacement was his collegiate debut in that same series on May 6th. Got the pinch hit at bat May 7th. Last year, 27 for 134, hit 201 in 34 starts, 46 games he played in for the Bobcats. 23 starts were at third base, 11 at second base. Has been primarily a third baseman when he has started for UIW and has played in the field for Coach Schatzberger. A quick visit there. This time by the pitching coach of Prairie View A&M. Happy making. Two one to Hernandez. That one's in the turf. That's going to get away from the catcher. Beck will score, and everyone will move up an extra ninety feet. High skill not in the game anymore. Not quite sure who's behind the plate. They've got a three on it. I'm looking for some catchers. Could possibly be number 43, John Lawson. So three one runs outside. And it'll be a walk for Ryder Hernandez. So unfortunately for Hernandez, that pass ball and wild pitch kind of takes away an RBI from Hernandez, but he's able to reach for the second straight time. Base is still juiced now. Tyler Cowan to the plate, goes after the first pitch, pop fly to center field. Looks to be deep enough for Gregson to score. Tormos moves to third. And Hernandez also moves up to second. So the second sack fly by UIW today, back-to-back -back innings. They've converted that successfully. And the last guy to do it comes to the plate, Weldon Sherrill. Walked his first time up, RBI, sack fly. His last time up, two more cards on a pond. This one chopped foul. We mentioned Cheryl played at Rose State Junior College as a freshman. Hit 380, was the best hitter on the team. Scored 59 runs. 65 hits, 15 doubles, all leading the team in those categories. Also had 31 RBIs and two homers as he played in 47 games. Similar numbers as a sophomore last year. Hitting over 300, and that one's into the gap. That'll score both Tormos and Hernandez. It's a two-out, two-RBI double for Weldon Sherrill. Swinging a hot bat as of late. Cardinals putting up big, crooked numbers here in the first three innings. Five in the first, three in the second, and now four, and looking for more here in the third. Cameron Kaylee, forget about this one. The netting saved the UIW bus. 
because Cameron Kaylee sent this one to the parking lot. His fifth homer of the year. Two more runs across. And UIW up by eight, 14 to six. Now here in the bottom of the third. A no doubter for Cameron Kaylee. Had a homer yesterday. A solo shot. It was his only hit yesterday. Homer came in that fourth inning to make a 3-2 game, a 4-2 game. And there was no doubt about that one. Rob Liddington Jr. trying to pass the bat here with two outs. And he gets caught swinging. Kind of tied up there the second time. He has gone down on strikes. And the third time he has been the last out for the Cardinals. But UIW puts six more on the board in the bottom of the third. It's a 14-6 game here at Sullivan Field. Okay, when you turn around, you're going to see someone. You have a turkey and cheese. Let's imagine that LL Cool J has a bubble around him. Do we want to be Hey, I'm Keith. Uh, there are some situations that young homeowners turning into their parents just can't handle. Yep, there he is. There's my nephew. Now, I got a video of him uh, playing piano. That's not how you take a selfie. Progressive can't save you from becoming your parents, but we can save you money when you bundle home and auto with us. Three, two, one. We don't need a countdown. Just take the picture. Choice Hotels is a family of brands that helps you get the most for your money so you can be any traveler you want to be. You can be a free hot breakfast hero in a comfort hotel. Yes! That's how you waffle! A romantic weekend escaper at a Cambria hotel. Or Mr. Get the Party Started. Hey! Be a pool lounger or a big room relaxer. With 22 brands and the best value for your money, Choice Hotels has a stay for any you. Stay twice and get a free night when you book direct at choicehotels.com. Gotta get the corners. UIW putting up big crooked numbers. Six runs on three hits that inning. UIW had gotten on three other times on walks. J.D. Gregson had a single, Weldon Sherrill with a two RBI double, and then a pitch later, Cameron Cayley sitting out right center. His fifth homer of the year. As he got two more RBIs. To his sheet, he's got three today, and he's got 20 RBIs on the season so far. And it is indeed in for high skill number 43, John Lawson. And he is down on three straight strikes. First strikeout today for Larry Westall. And he has retired all four Panthers he's seen. So Lee Allen Jr. back to the plate. Had a push bunt for a single his first time up. It loaded the bases. And then came in to score on the grand slam from Michael Smith, Jr. Westall over and across for strike one. Count goes to one and one. This one out off. 
East side. Allen, a junior from Kansas City, Missouri, went to Kansas City Community College. Two ninety seven so far this season. Eleven hits, one double, has scored eight runs. His ninth being in that second inning. Two two. Slider off the end of the bat and foul. So we'll track back into the box. Count at two and two. As ball runs inside. Now the count runs full. Three, two. I pop up. This is Staying in the field, in the infield as well, and fighting off the sun is Tyler Cowan. For out number two here in the fourth. After two rough innings where UIW is kind of getting behind in counts and then happened to throw strikes. And they were getting punished by the Panthers through those first two innings. Larry Westall has quieted the storm. Isaac Davila struck out his last time up. This being his second AB of the game so far. Slider comes in the front door for a called strike. One, two count now to Davila. Has started all but one game, has played in every single game for Prairie View AM. 243 hitter. Scored 10 runs, nine hits. Two doubles, one triple, one home run. Stays alive. Just getting a piece of that one. Two, two. I pop up. That'll get over the bleachers once again. Five, eight, 157 utility player. For Coach Riggins. About an hour and a half away from his hometown of Austin and Elkin High School. This one stays in the park but foul. Off the sidewall there in right field. Another 2-2 two -two count. Two outs. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Westall strikes out two of the three outs in the fourth. Another 1-2-3 inning for the senior right-hander. And it's an eight-run lead for UIW. When we come back, we'll try to talk to Coach Riggins and see what adjustments he wants to make down the stretch. Kashata. Wide open spaces and lots of room to play. That's Cachata Casino Resort. Escape to Cachata and play the largest and most spacious gaming floor in Southwest Louisiana. With thousands of the newest, most exciting slots, over 55 table games, live bingo and off-track betting, plus beautiful hotels, award-winning cuisine, and the number one golf course in Louisiana. It's Louisiana's largest casino resort and Louisiana's best bets. Jersey Mike slices your sub right in front of you, see? 
the slicer, the meat and cheese. It has a rhythm. This is the rhythm of the slice. The slice. Oh, yeah. The rhythm of the slice. This is the rhythm of the slice. The slice. Oh, yeah. Order for Danny? <laughs> Sliced right in front of you. It's a Jersey Mike's thing. A sub above. 14 6 game as we send it down to the Panther bullpen as Katie Goodman is with head coach Riggins. Thanks, Sam. Coach Riggins. Um, back and forth game. They got a little bit on you there on the third. You had back to back double doubles in the second. You have double home runs there from Michael Smith. So just thoughts there on him and, and what your thoughts are on the game so far. Uh, Mike is. Uh, been our leadoff guy all year, and he's um, been doing a great job for us. Um, he just got two good pitches that was up, and um, and they just stayed up. He was out front on both of them. Just a big, strong guy. Got it up in the wind and, and uh, got him out. So, Well, great work there from him. And then on the pitching staff side, got a new guy out there on the mound. Thoughts so far on what you've seen today? Got to get a hit. Right? You got to get a hit, and you, and you got to command your fastball. And so right now, he's not doing it. He's getting behind, and then... then we're creating to get through, and you'll have a game like what we have right now. Um, you have to get ahead with your fastball, and you have to command it, and you have to make some pitches and make plays. Thank you so much, Coach. Back to you, Sam. Thank you, Katie. Yeah, Coach Antoine Riggins in his ninth year as the head coach for Prairie View A&M is dead on right in that category. Eight walks so far for his pitching staff. And to let UIW kind of just sit on that fastball. And they have hammered it. Nine hits so far for the Cardinals. Only two extra base hits so far today for them. One double and one home run. That home run coming from Cameron Cayley. And double was from Weldon Cheryl. The batter right before. Kaylee hit the home run. 3-1 count now to Dalton Beck. This one popped up into left field. Wind drifting it back a little bit further, but playable. And in the glove of Michael Burroughs for out number one. First time today, Dalton Beck has been retired. So now Ryan Scott will try to get Back on base, two for three. And getting on base, one for two overall today. Single and a walk his first two times up. And struck out looking. Aaron is only at bat in that third inning. Another 2-0 count for Prairie View A&M. Scott fouls this one into the back netting right on it once again. So 2-1 count now to the first baseman. Played right field yesterday. Matt Marlowe got his first Collegiate start at the D1 level. Transfer from Regis University. They're at the Division II level. First start as a Cardinal. Got his hit. First hit in his first at bat. And also scored the first run of the game. Ryan Scott was the player of the game alongside J.D. Gregson both had two extra base knocks. Ryan Scott had two extra walks though. We got to interview him after the game. Second walk today for Scott as J.D. Gregson is back in the box. First pitch for a strike, two singles and a walk so far for the catcher. This one just inside, missing on the slider. Right 
quick throw, slide it back safely is Scott. Carlton still working. This one deep into left field. This one is gone. J.D. Gregson goes big fly. His fourth homer of the year. The fourth time he has reached base safely today. And he has found his swing here in San Antonio. Ties him up for home runs with Cameron Gailey. And, you know, that's music to Coach Schatzberger's ears when you got two guys both gunning for that lead home run position for a piece on the season so far. Not bad. And just like that, if Coach Riggins paying a mound visit. That will be the end of Carlton's day. Kaylee had four coming into today. His fifth came in that third inning. And J.D. Gregson says, I'm not going to let you run away with the home run lead just too early into this season as he picks up his fourth home run. He's also got four RBIs on the game. We'll take a step aside and get you the new Panthers pitcher when we return. A 16-6 lead for Incarnate Word. Choice Hotels is a family of brands that helps you get the most for your money so you can be any traveler you want to be. You could be a free hot breakfast hero in a comfort hotel. Yes! That's how you waffle! A romantic weekend escaper at a Cambria hotel. Or Mr. Get the Party Started. Hey! Be a pool lounger. Or a big room relaxer. With 22 brands and the best value for your money, Choice Hotels has a stay for any you. Stay twice and get a free night when you book direct at choicehotels.com. Gotta get the corners. Always dry scoop before you run. The zero effort workout will have you jacked. Listen to me. Hot dog diet got me shredded. Tape your mouth shut. You'll sleep better. The world is full of health experts. It's time to listen to science. One a day is formulated with B vitamins to help convert food into fuel. One a day. Science that matters. New Panther pitcher taking the bump. A right-hander from Corpus Christi, Texas, number 13, Matthew Crow. He spent some time at Paris Junior College before making his way to Prairie View A&M. So far, 13.2 innings pitched, 10 of those earned runs, seven strikeouts. And he's given up three home runs so far, looking to settle things down here for Prairie View. It's been quite a hitting day here for UIW. Yeah, but one of the lower opponent's batting average on the team. Oh, their batters hitting only 236 against him. That's second best on the team with Victor Mendoza. Batters only hitting him at a 154 rate. So one of the better arms in this Prairie View A&M Pitching staff tries to go with the outside fastball to sneak in that back door, unable to let it run back. So one-two count, Sam Tormos at the plate. Has scored twice, walked his last time up. One-two, slider over and across for strike three. The second time, Tormos has been put down on strikes this time. A backwards K. The second out here in the bottom of the fourth. Cardinals have scored each of the first four innings. Have a 10 run lead now. Fouls this one off his rider, Hernandez. Has reached base 
each of his last two times, singled in the second and walked in the third, came around to score in that third inning. One of the six runs. This one just outside the line was jammed inside, and Garland Parker unable to catch that one for out number three. So an 0-2 count now for Crowell. Fouls it off himself out in front once again, this time on the slider. Does enough to stay alive is Hernandez. Not Crawl's first rodeo in 2023. Had a 507 ERA in 2022. Had a 675 ERA. 48 and 47 strikeouts each of those seasons. Another one. Fouled away, staying alive is Hernandez. Dual sport athlete out of high school. Was the USA Today Male Athlete of the Year. Even the Austin American Statesman Player of the Year for what he did as a high school quarterback for Cedar Park. Goes down on strikes here. Two strikeouts for Crowell. Able to get the Panthers out of trouble. So two more across for UIW. We're through four. A 16-6 lead for the Cardinals. See, HomeQuote Explorer lets you easily compare home insurance options so you can get what you need without overpaying. Yeah, we've spent a lot on this kitchen. Oh, yeah, really high-end stuff. Sorry, that's our ghost. Yeah, okay. It's more annoying than anything. Too bad there's mold behind the backsplash. Yep, there's mold. Well, then, let's see if we can save you some money with Progressive. Guess how much I originally paid for this fireplace? 23 bucks. Materials and labor. Just ignore him. You got bamboozled. Choice Hotels is a family of brands that helps you get the most for your money so you can be any traveler you want to be. You could be a free hot breakfast hero in a comfort hotel. Yes! That's how you waffle! A romantic weekend escaper at a Cambria hotel. Or Mr. Get the Party Started. Hey! Be a pool lounger. Or a big room relaxer. With 22 brands and the best value for your money, Choice Hotels has a stay for any you. Stay twice and get a free night when you book direct at choicehotels.com. Gotta get the corners. Top of the fifth, a 16-6 lead for UIW. Larry Westall going into his third inning of work has retired all six Panthers he has seen at the plate. And now we'll have to go through Michael Smith Jr., who has homered both times here today. A solo homer in the first and then a grand slam in the second responsible for five of the six runs 2-0 fastball over and across four strike one luca boscarino has also come into the game replacing jd gregson looks like that is the only Defensive change so far in this inning. 3-1, slider over and across. So the count runs full. Smith has worked the count each and every time. Payoff, this one's lined into center. 
It'll be the third hit for Michael Smith Jr. Westall keeps it in the park, though. Still one heck of a game here for Smith. Two home runs. Second one is a, a drive right into a pocket. Just quality player. Coach said always their leadoff hitter. Slider catches a piece of the outside corner. Four strike one. Garrett Weiss one for two today. Singled in the second, but then was caught stealing by Gregson. Back-to-back -back si sliders quickly down 0-2. Yeah, Smith has been a good leadoff hitter. You want to see your leadoff guy see as many pitches as well as get on base. His homer in the first came on a 3-1 count. His homer in the second, the grand slam, was on a full count. And then another full count single here in the fifth. 1-2 count now to Weiss, off and running is Smith, the throw down is not in time. Smith able to sneak into second safely with a stolen base. I have to watch that back, that was a close one. And it looks like Coach Schatzberger is going to make a coach's challenge, so just one umpire, usually with a three-man crew, you'll see two of the three go. So just Robert Mays, who is the third base umpire to start the game, coming in behind the plate for Matthews. Matthew Hansen took a foul ball off the mask there in the first inning. So it's just... Robert Mays and Thomas Walkoviak. Yeah, I mean, from this angle, it looked like he had his foot on the base prior to Smith getting there. Um, but it was a close call, and that's the struggle of not having enough people out there on the field to see all the different angles. And you can't really blame them, but thank goodness for instant replay and our production team having recorded that. And Walk VX at actually at that position where even in a three man crew, the third base umpire would be right where he was at. So it's not like they were totally out of position, but especially with you getting two coaches challenges, might as well take a look. You don't get to challenge very many things. Right. This is the one of the few things you can challenge and probably have the best angle to find out. So we will wait for Robert Mays to track back. He has appeared from behind the Prairie View A&M dugout. And the call will stand as a safe call. Had me fooled. I would have called it the other way, but that's why I'm not an umpire. <laughs> and now it looked like They're just trying to make sure it was a confirmation of a coach's challenge versus a official review. Thought maybe he was putting someone in the books there, but that's good. And on we go. So a 2-2 count safely into second is Michael Smith Jr. No outs, slow chopper to short. Fielded by Cheryl, the throw across is not in time. So they're gonna say Garrett Weiss got into first base safely. Good hustle there from 
the Panthers center fielder. And now runners are at the corners. Panthers not bowing down. We've seen them put up some really quality hits. Infield single for Weiss. Be his second of the day. Eighth hit for Prairie View A&M. So Westall in a little bit of trouble here in the fifth. And retired his first six batters he saw. Now faces Michael Burrows. 0-2, able to check his swing. So the count goes to one and two. Walked in the first and struck out looking to end the second. Weiss slides back safely into first. UIW trying to hang on to a 10 run lead. Run rule is 10 after seven, so still plenty of baseball to be played. This one grounded to the third baseman. The throw all the way across is in time. And that'll retire Burroughs. Scoring from third is Michael Smith. Weiss moves to second. So that makes it a nine run game. UIW will gladly trade the out and run. First out here in the fifth. Mar I was gonna say they've got quite a bit of cushion going into this. And hit on the first pitch is Marshall Jonas. So that's the first time he has reached base today. Hopefully he had enough cushion for that hit. Seen a couple of those here today. Slider backed up there on Larry Westall. His first free pass he's given up. Slider back in the zone. Chopped foul there by Tyron Norris. Grounded out to Tyler Cowan at second base his last time up. Doubled and scored in the second. And back to back. Guys, he has plunked on sliders that have backed up on him. Not exactly the spot you want to be in. Still only a single out on the board. So UIW has a right-hander throwing in the bullpen now. One out in the top of the fifth, already one run across. Bases are loaded for Garland Parker. One for two today, high pop-up in the infield caught by Ryan Scott. Last time against Westall. Doubled and scored his first time up, though. Checks his swing. Doesn't matter. It's a called strike. Good spot there from the sidewinder. As far to the first base side as you can get. Trying to set up the fastball inside. And just missed. He's been going soft away, soft away, soft away. Tried to go something hard in. And just missed the zone. One, two now. Back to the slider. Slides out of the zone. Two, two count now to Garland Parker. Norris at first, Jonas at second, and Weiss at third. 2-2. Two, two. High pop-up. This is into center. Kaylee is under it. He will make the throw to third. 
Trying to make sure they only give up one run. Nobody else moves outside of Wise. So a sack fly will score the second run of the inning. Matches the two-run homer by J.D. Gregson in the bottom of the fourth. Slider across for strike one. John Lawson struck out his last time up after coming in for Mason High Skill. Big cut there out in front of the slider once again. Quickly down 0 and 2. First at bats as a Panther this year. A strikeout, grounder to third, trying to go the short way is Cheryl. And in time at third, Ryder Hernandez on the corner of the bag, able to beat Norris. So we are through four and a half here in San Antonio. UIW doubling up Prairie View A&M 16 to eight. See, Home Quote Explorer lets you easily compare home insurance options so you can get what you need without overpaying. Yeah, we've spent a lot on this kitchen. No, oh, yeah, really high end stuff. Sorry, that's our ghosts. Yeah, okay. It's more annoying than anything. Too bad there's mold behind the backsplash. Yep, there's mold. Well, then, let's see if we can save you some money with Progressive. Guess how much I originally paid for this fireplace? 23 bucks. Materials and labor. Just ignore him. You got bamboozled. Choice Hotels is a family of brands that helps you get the most for your money so you can be any traveler you want to be. You can be a free hot breakfast hero in a comfort hotel. Yes! That's how you waffle! A romantic weekend escaper at a Cambria hotel. Or Mr. Get the Party Started. Hey! Be a pool lounger. Or a big room relaxer. With 22 brands and the best value for your money, Choice Hotels has a stay for any you. Stay twice and get a free night when you book direct at choicehotels.com. Gotta get the corners. Live. 16-8 lead for UIW. They have scored in all four innings. They have come to the plate. Five in the first, three in the second, six in the third, and two in the fourth. Prairie View a &M was scoreless for the... First two innings, Larry Westall was in the game. It was six up, six down, able to get to Westall in that last inning. Able to score two runs on two hits, two left on base. He also scored one in the first to start the game on a solo homer from Michael Smith Jr. And then five to answer the five in the bottom of the first by UIW. Tyler Cowan to lead off the bottom of the fifth. One for two today. Cowan has two RBIs, one on the sack fly. Able to shoot this one right to the shortstop and able to snag it is Isaac Davila. Hard out there for Tyler Cowan to start the fifth. That is tough, but great reaction there from Davila. Just able to get on the end of it to collect. Third batter, Mr. Krell has faced. Struck out Tormos and Hernandez to end the fourth inning. And he gets Tyler Cowan to line out to start the fifth. Weldon Sherrill at the plate. 
Brush him and Mupp. On the inside, fastball, 2-0 and count to Cheryl. Two RBI double in the third. Came around to score on the two-run home run from Cameron Cayley. Has been productive each time. Walked in the first and had a sack fly in the second. And he walks on four straight. So another productive AB quality at bat for Cheryl as re he reaches base. And it'll be a quick visit from Antoine Riggins as he is going to make a call to the pen and bring out another pitcher for the Panthers. We'll step aside here with one out in the bottom of the fifth. UIW up 16 to eight at home. Choice Hotels is a family of brands that helps you get the most for your money so you can be any traveler you want to be. You could be a free hot breakfast hero in a comfort hotel. Yes! That's how you waffle! A romantic weekend escaper at a Cambria hotel. Or Mr. Get the Party Started. Hey! Be a pool lounger or a big room relaxer. With 22 brands and the best value for your money, Choice Hotels has a stay for any you. Stay twice and get a free night when you book direct at choicehotels.com. Gotta get the corners. There they are. Everybody get their banking done? Let's go, drive, we gotta go. Someone's in a hurry. And one Mississippi, two Mississippi. Can we go? Yeah, faster. Oh, no, sorry. You see, I get discounts for my safe driving with Snapshot from Progressive. You should see my savings. They're nuts. You told us he was a skilled wheelman. No, I'm a wheelman. It's family name on my mother's side. Irish. Like New pitcher on the mound for Prairie View A&M. The fourth guy to take the ball for Coach Riggins is going to be one of their best in number 17, Victor Mendoza. A senior from Austin, Texas, standing at 6'0", 195. So far this season has eight innings pitch, two runs earned, and eight strikeouts. Yeah, he's only given up four hits. When we talked about Crow coming into the game and being one of their best arms, having the second best batting average against opponents at 237. Victor Mendoza only letting batters hit 154 against him. 0 for 2 is his record. An 0 and 2 record is ERA 225. Does have two saves in the six wins the Panthers have and will face the top of the lineup for UIW. Cameron Cayley at the plate, fresh off his two-run homer in the third inning. Part of a six-run frame for the Cardinals. 1-1, one, one. that one's upstairs. Two for three on the game is Kaylee. A line out to the second baseman to start the game. Came back around with an infield single there in that same inning. Walked in the second and then homered in the third. That's a deep high fly ball into center. Backing up at the track and making the catch. So a long out there for Kaylee as he had a wall scraper that almost gave him his sixth home run of the year. That one looked like it was going pretty good there, but good work from that outfielder to get there and collect. And a pinch hitter coming in for Rob Liddington Jr. is Sterling Sutcliffe. So Ryan Schatzberger, just like 
Coach Riggins going into his reserves here today. Sutcliffe has been used quite a bit for Coach Schatzberger. He's been in as a pinch hitter, a defensive specialist, and has gotten some starts as well. Fouls out to the third ba baseman, Garland Parker, to end the fifth, and it's the first time the Panthers have kept UIW off the board. So no runs, no hits, one left stranded for the Cardinals. We're through five, a 16-8 game here from Sullivan Field. Choice Hotels is a family of brands that helps you get the most for your money so you can be any traveler you want to be. You could be a free hot breakfast hero in a comfort hotel. Yes! That's how you waffle! A romantic weekend escaper at a Cambria hotel. Or Mr. Get the Party Started. Hey! Be a pool lounger. Or a big room relaxer. With 22 brands and the best value for your money, Choice Hotels has a stay for any you. Stay twice and get a free night when you book direct at choicehotels.com. Gotta get the corners. No flex, zone. No flex, zone. <laughs> they know better. They know better. Wanna go? Let em. Flex. Rock, paper, scissors for who's on dinner duty? Nice try. I'll get it. <laughs> Need some help? Delicious two ingredient weeknight dinners. Approved. <laughs> Sixteen eight game from Sullivan Field presented by HEB on the campus of the University of the Incarnate Word in San Antonio, Texas. Cardinals got a bounce back victory yesterday versus UT Rio Grande Valley, seven to five at home. One of five games in a loaded week for Incarnate Word. This is the first of four games versus SWAC opponents. They will take on Texas Southern in a three-game series. Afternoon games, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 2 p.m. start times on Friday and Saturday, 1 p.m. start time. On Sunday, all those games will be streamed on ESPN+. Plus. Larry Westall still working on the bump for Coach Schatzberger. Lee Allen Jr. at the plate for the third time. Fouls this one into the mitt of Boscarino. Down one and two. A push bunt single for his only hit today. Hopped up to Tyler Cowan there at second, his second time up. Two two count now. Slider off the handle and foul. UIW also played SWAC opponent. Alcorn State earlier this season in the second weekend they swept the Braves winning 14 to 4 game 1 15 to 0 game 2 and 18 to 1 in game 3 all games that were run rule victories in seven innings pop up into foul ground and almost making the diving catch was Ryan Scott great hustle from the first baseman. Almost there, laid himself out flat like a pancake. Almost had it. Just about stolen out there for Larry Westall. Instead, it's new life for Lee Allen Jr. Jam shot fielded by Cheryl. The throw across is in time this time. No question about it, as Weldon Sherrill has been pretty sure handed there at short. 
good fast-paced movement there from UIW. Again, they've had really solid defense. When they've been tested, they handle it well. Eight hits, eight runs, and one error for Prairie View A&M today. 16 runs, 10 hits, no errors for UIW this afternoon. Davila has struck out both times off the end of the bat. Westall overthrows Ryan Scott and not able to tag him in time, possibly thinking he was going to make a move to second. Almost too easy of a play there for Westall. It's kind of a tough one because it's off the end of the bat. You got a lot of time as Davila had struggled getting out of the box, but he had to throw over him and just put too much air on it. Might have been a commentator's curse. <laughs> just talking about their impeccable defense. But, you know, sometimes when you have a little bit too much time to think, that's when the thinking gears take over the muscle memory of just getting it done one too quick, right? So maybe just a lesson there. 14th error committed by the Cardinals this season. That average is out to just over one per game. Fielding percentage at 971. They were 970 last year. Had 61 errors on the year last year. Two two count now to Michael Smith Jr. Westall trying to retire him for the first time today. Fastball, shot out the other way. Good piece of hitting from the leadoff Panther. Going first to third is Davila. He follows up back-to-back -back home runs with back-to-back -back singles, and he is four for four today. One heck of a player there for Prairie View seen a lot of good work, especially on the offensive side for these guys. Slider over the heart of the plate for strike one. Garrett Wise, two for three today. Trying to keep pace and follow up exactly what Michael Smith has been doing and check over there. Safely slides back. High fly ball down the left field line. That is tailing foul. And just foul. It bounced in play in foul ground but right against the fence. Gonna be very tough for Sam Tormos who moved over from right field to left field. Sterling Sutcliffe who came in for Rob Liddington Jr. Goes into right field. Fastball brushes up wise there inside. So one, two count, runners at the corners for the Panthers. Slider popped up into the infield, calling it is Scott, runs down about three quarters of the baseline to make the grab. And now there are two away. Scott has had quite an inning, made some good catches, laid himself out to Try to corral a ball and lots of movement there from him. First pitch fouled out of play. 
on the right field line. Michael Burrows to the plate for the fourth time. Local kid played at Judson High School. Quickly down 0 and 2. Looking for a hit today. Reached on a walk his first time up. Has since struck out looking and grounded out to third. Off and running is Smith. He will get into second sliding without a throw. Slider was well outside. Not really throwable for Boscarino. Westall worried about the guy at the plate. Fastball runs outside to Burroughs. 2-2 two -two count, two outs here in the top of the sixth. Smith at second, Davila at third. Westall with the pitch, slider fouled off, just got enough of it, was Burroughs. Two two laced up the middle. That'll score Davila from third. Safely into home is Smith. It's a two strike, two out, two RBI double, excuse me, single for Michael Burroughs. Just like that, Panthers continue to chip away at that score line. Quite the back and forth game. I mean, yes, UIW's up six runs, but they've done some work here in the last couple innings. Michael Smith Jr. has gone to the plate four times, and he has scored all four times. He's even driven in five runs. And that last single by Burroughs will be at the end of Larry Westall's day. So a new Cardinal pitcher, on the bump, lots of runs here on Wednesday afternoon. We'll get you the new UIW pitcher when we return to across for the Panthers. Two outs here in the top of the sixth. Choice Hotels is a family of brands that helps you get the most for your money so you can be any traveler you want to be. You could be a free hot breakfast hero in a comfort hotel. Yes! That's how you waffle! A romantic weekend escaper at a Cambria hotel. Or Mr. Get the Party Started. Hey! Be a pool lounger or a big room relaxer. With 22 brands and the best value for your money, Choice Hotels has a stay for any you. Stay twice and get a free night when you book direct at choicehotels.com. Gotta get the corners. Okay, when you turn around, you're gonna see some more. You have a turkey and cheese. Let's imagine that LL Cool J has a bubble around him. Do we want to be hey, I'm Keith. Oh. There are some situations that young homeowners turning into their parents just can't handle. Yep, there he is. There's my nephew. Now I got a video of him uh, playing piano. That's not how you take a selfie. Progressive can't save you from becoming your parents, but we can save you money when you bundle home an auto with us. Three, two, one. We don't need a countdown. Just take the picture. Live. Two outs in the top of the sixth. The Panthers have put up back-to-back -back innings here in the top of the fifth and sixth innings. Have scored two runs apiece. Still working with two outs and a runner on first. And the new Cardinal pitcher is number 34, Edward Mendoza. Junior from Eagle Pass. Spent some time at Texas State before making his way to UIW. He is a right-hander and has so far this season pitched for two innings, given up four hits, three of those earned, and has one strikeout on the stat sheet. Younger brother of Ray Mendoza. He was the Southland Conference Newcomer of the Year last year. Son of Raynal Mendoza. It was the highest draft pick of any Incarnate Word Cardinal baseball player. Well, 
one heck of a family to grow up in. Talk about competition and someone's got hit, someone's got to throw when you're both in that same age range as kids. And of course you have a powerhouse player of a dad. And lots of history at UIW with their family. Able to get the out here to end the top of the sixth. Prairie View A&M still scratching and clawing as we go to the bottom of the sixth. 16-10 lead for UIW. With the first pick in the Jersey Mike's Catering Box Draft, Sarah from Carolina selects number 13, the original Italian. You know, I trust in my gut, and uh, that's exactly where the sub's gonna go, so. The Jersey Mike's Catering Box, a sub above. In my Louisiana, the day starts at 4 a.m. In my Louisiana, every meal is a celebration. My Louisiana really makes me wonder. Ours is bad! With real life swamp creatures! In my Louisiana, music is a way of life. My Louisiana is sheer magic. From sun up to sundown. Till sun up again. What will your Louisiana be? When you find your Louisiana, you feed your soul. Jersey Mike's freshly slices your sub right in front of you. It has a rhythm. This is the rhythm of the slice. The slice. Oh, yeah. Slice right in front of you. It's a Jersey Mike's thing. So Edward Mendoza records the final out for UIW. The guy from Eagle Pass. Not sure if he's related at all to Victor Mendoza, who's trying to keep the Cardinals at bay. A senior from Austin, Texas. So you know, baseball becomes really, really small with a lot of these guys playing at the same level since they were just teenagers. Select ball runs across the state. Even the JUCO ranks. And even some of the guys that have come here, like J.D. Gregson and Cameron Cayley, both were at Baylor for a time. Gregson moved on to Grayson College, played with this guy, Dalton Beck, who then transferred to Kansas State. The world really gets pretty small. Never really know how connected one is really with each other. It seems like the higher you go in the baseball ranks, the smaller that world gets because you've got transfers, you've got kids you may have played select with, and... A lot of times people will travel for select, so you're playing in different regions against different teams. By the time you get to college, somebody's going to know someone who knows someone in that world. And you go into the pro leagues, and it's even smaller. Dalton Beck, one and two, staying alive. This one's getting into and over the UIW bullpen. Beck today. Two for three, has reached three times and scored three times. Quite a bit of cloud coverage here. That one slices foul once again, really working the opposite way, is Beck. I'm sure they appreciate a break from that hard sun bearing down. Victor Mendoza. Continuing to live on the outside half. Dalton Beck staying alive. One, two, comes in on the slider. Back knee there, ties up Dalton Beck. So his first strikeout for Victor Mendoza today. And now Ryan Scott will come to the dish. Slider on the outside corner for strike one. 
One for two is Scott with two walks. Pass ball pulled outside. Scott still hitting over 500 so far this season. Came into the game at 517. On base percentage at 641 has taken his fair share of free passes. Has been hit by two pitches. The two walks today get him to 10 walks on the season. And swings through that one. That one gets away from the catcher trying to beat it out is Scott, and he is into first safely. So it'll be the second strikeout for Mendoza, but reaching on the drop third is Ryan Scott. So that will not help the batting average. I'm not even sure if it'll help out the on-base percentage, but it's a runner nonetheless. Luca Boscarino goes after the first pitch. This one called off by the second baseman. The new first baseman, Jaden Moreno, really wanted it. But then Lee Allen Jr. called him off in foul territory. So Luca Boscarino is retired after seeing only one pitch. So Sam Tormos will work with two outs. Has scored twice. Reached on an error and on a walk. Has struck out the other two. That one over the outside corner for strike two. Mendoza filling up the zone. That one just outside. A one two count now to Tormos. Both he and Ray Mendoza transferred from Houston just a year ago. Really a good mix of junior college guys and four year college transfers for Coach Schatzberger on this team. With even a lot of the four year college guys making a stop at the JUCO ranks as well. So Tormo strikes out for the second straight time, the third time he's been down on strikes today. And it's a rare three out, or three strikeout inning. He only records two of them on the out, but one reaches, one left on for UIW. We are two-thirds of the way home. A 16-10 lead for UIW. Today, I'm excited um, to show you um, <laughs> um, the um, Let's dive in. Hotels.com rewards every stay with one key cash. What does that call it? To go home to Serbia fund. Is that an invite? Mm. Rock, paper, scissors for who's on dinner duty? Nice try. I'll get it. <laughs> Need some help? Delicious two-ingredient weeknight dinners. Approved. <laughs> to the seventh we go. Edward Mendoza still on the bump for UIW. Both teams 
Double digit runs, double digit hits as well. 10 runs, 10 hits, one error for Prairie View AM. 16 runs, 10 hits, and one error for UIW. Five, six, seven, do up for the Panthers this inning. One, one, upstairs for ball two. Tyron Norris, one for two today, was hit by a pitch his last time up and is a ball away from reaching base. Once again on a free pass. Doubled and scored to start off the second. And the count runs full on the fastball. Called for a strike on the outside corner. 3-2. That one pulled outside by Mendoza. Third walk issued by UIW today. First pitch. Across the heart, four strike one. Garland Parker, one for two as well. RBI double in the second, and an RBI sack fly in the fifth. One one. That one in the turf gets away from Boscarino. Rounding second and assigned to stay there is Norris. So he moves up to second on the wild pitch. Parker, 6'3", 233 freshman from Sherman, Texas, went to Denison High School. Mendoza checks Norris at second, pulls the fastball there as he comes home. 3 1 count. John Lawson on deck. 0 for 2 today. And getting the late call is Mendoza. Parker almost. Took a step towards first like so many of his teammates have today. Count runs full. Mendoza. High fastball just ducking under the liner. The guy's in his dugout. All smiles in the Prairie View of him dug out after getting away of that screaming foul ball and able to work the walk is Garland Parker. Now mound visit. And a quick move to the pen by head coach Ryan Schatzberger as Edward Mendoza starts off the seventh Walking the first two Panthers. So we will get you the new Cardinal pitcher when we return. Top of the seventh, two on, nobody out. UIW still hanging on to a six run lead. Parts you need at the prices you want. Guaranteed to fit every time. So you can keep your ride or die alive. Choice Hotels is a family of brands that helps you get the most for your money so you can be any traveler you want to be. You can be a free hot breakfast hero in a comfort hotel. Yes! That's how you waffle! Mr. This Script got a plot twist at a Radisson Hotel. 
a business big leaguer. Go for key. Even the ultimate pool float inflator. With 22 brands and the best value for your money, Choice Hotels has a stay for any you. Stay twice and get a free night when you book direct at choicehotels.com. Gotta get the corners. Live Fifth Cardinal pitcher to be used by head coach Ryan Schatzberger. And this time, he's going to go to a lefty, the first of the day, number 38, Ryan Slatzhauer. A senior standing at 6'3", 190 from Houston, Texas, before UIW, came from Hutchinson Community College. And being a relief pitcher is not uncommon here for Schlatzhauer. Does a good job coming in and settling things down. He's a five. Point two innings pitch this season so far. Two runs earned. Has given up three runs, two earned, and uh, on five hits. Yeah, last year had 19 appearances. Second on the team in that category, only behind Steve Hayward, who was their closer. Two and two record. In his first year with the Cardinals was Slot Tower, 27 innings that he pitched quickly down 2-0 is Slots Hauer. Six strikeouts on the season, had 27 last season, was working with the 7.0 ERA. Trying to get somebody to throw some strikes is Schatzberger. John Lawson 0 for 2 today. Ended the inning in the fifth, grounding into a fielder's choice. Cheryl went the short way as he was deep in the 5-6 hole, decided to just take the force out at third. 3-0, take all the way in for strike one. Lawson also struck out in the fourth to lead off the inning for the Panthers. Norris there at second. Parker at first, 3-1 at the knees, four strike two. Again, a Panther thinking it was ball four. Take up the bat once more. Full count, no outs here in the top of the seventh. That one is ball four. As that one missed inside, so three straight walks. Two by Edward Mendoza, one by Ryan Slotzhauer. As the Panthers ready to pounce once again. Last season, Slotzhauer kept batters to a 204 average against him. This one. Across the chest, four strike one. Coming off a game where they only had two hits, one being a home run by Tyron Norris. The bats have found some rhythm here today. Both pitching staffs have had some trouble finding the zone. 15 total walks. Ten issued by Panther pitching, five by UIW pitching. Two-one count. Slider also misses. Norris at third, Parker at second, Lawson at first. 3-1 count. Chopper is through for a base hit. That one will score one. Everyone stays put at the next bag. So an RBI single by Lee Allen Jr. His second single, and it makes it a five-run game. These Panthers just slowly crawl, crawl, flying their way back. My goodness, going to get that one out. 
slowly clawing their way back. Definitely not out of it yet. I guess they were trying to catch them with a hidden ball trick. But the rider Hernandez still holding the ball as Slot Tower was off the mound. They said Parker was still on third base, so still no outs. Slider low. For ball one. Isaac Davila. 0 for 3, reached and scored on the Westall error in the sixth. Two more arms working in the bullpen for UIW. Slots Tower dots a fastball on the inside corner for strike one. Two one count now. That one high as his hat flies off as well. So a three one count. And Michael Smith Jr., four for four today, four runs he's scored. He's also driven in five, stands on deck. 3-1, fouls it into the netting. Jammed on the inside was Davila. So the count runs full. Parker at third, Lawson at second, Allen at first. Infield playing double play depth. It's not going to matter. The second walk issued by Slots Howard this inning. The fourth by the Cardinals here in the seventh has scored the second for Prairie View AM and the tying run will now step into the box. When we return, the new Cardinal pitcher will be announced. 12-6 is our score. Prairie View A&M trying to tie it up with one swing of the bat. Okay, when you turn around, you're going to see some more. You have a turkey and cheese. Let's imagine that LL Cool J has a bubble around him. Do we want to be hey, inside? Hey, I'm Keith. Oh. There are some situations that young homeowners turning into their parents just can't handle. Yep, there he is. There's my nephew. Now, I got a video of him uh, playing piano. That's not how you take a selfie. Progressive can't save you from becoming your parents, but we can save you money when you bundle home and auto with us. Three, two, one. We don't need a countdown. Just take the picture. All the parts you need at the prices you want. Guaranteed to fit every time. So you can keep your ride or die alive. Can human skin truly be this moisturized? Oh. Yeah. Wow. Sarah V. Developed with Michael Sarah. We like? <laughs> I need this win. <laughs> Live. 4 walks issued by Cardinal Pitching this inning. And Coach Schatzberger. Quick to make another mound visit and change, trying to go to someone he relies a lot on with some consistency. Micah Barons is that guy. Right, so far 10 innings pitched here this season. Seven strikeouts has given up nine hits, 10 runs. Four of those were earned. And so, you know, he spent some time against Villanova, those back-to-back -back games, Tarleton State, and then some time at ULM and those 5.2 innings pitched against that second Villanova game. He had three strikeouts there, so some good productive work from him. We've seen him bring Micah on before just to kind of settle the nerves and slow things down. That's exactly what they need from him here. As you mentioned, Sam, one hit away from tying up the game. And he came in a tough spot when he went his season long five and two thirds very similar to this exact situation but it was at the beginning of the game versus Villanova they had gotten themselves into a bases loaded jam 
due to a lot of walks. So far this season, Barron's has only walked seven batters. Making his fifth appearance and goes up against Michael Smith Jr. to start. Two homers, his first two at bats, back-to-back -back singles, his last two. A 1-1 in the turf, locked up by Boscarino. Two one count now. Corners playing double play, double play depth. Fastball on the outside corner, four strike two. Hernandez is actually playing back, giving himself some room. Ryan Scott at first playing even with the bag. Two two. This one blocked up by Voscarino, another slider in the turf. So the count runs full. Lawson at third, Allen at second, Davila at first. Michael Smith Jr. at the plate facing Micah Behrens. No outs here in the top of the seventh, already two across. Swing and a miss, strike three. They finally retire Michael Smith Jr. for the first time today and get a much needed out here in the seventh. Great work there from Micah Barron's. One of the few to make that happen in this situation. Definitely not who you want to hit another big home run when you've got guys on base. Garrett Wise at the plate now, two for four. That one over and across four, strike one. Singled in the second and fifth. Came across the score as a part of a two run fifth inning. They have scored two runs each of the last three innings. Looking for more though. Down 0-2 is Weiss. Gets a piece on it. Chop to third, the throw across is not in time. He beats out another infield single. Hernandez was playing back and despite his strong arm could not get Garrett Weiss. So the bases stay loaded. It scores another run. Now the tying run is on first base. The go-ahead run is at the plate. Three-hole hitter. Michael Burrows got his first hit of the afternoon in the sixth. That one misses low. Down at one and one. Or two and no, excuse me. That one's across for a strike. Scoreboard is showing the wrong count. Two one. That one grounded past Gerald. That will score one, the throw to the plate, not cut off. Safe from second is Davila, moving up to second on the throw is Burroughs, and it's a one run game. Just like that, almost all the way tied up and still plenty of chance to do it here and I think that's just a, a lesson to be learned is that you can never have enough cushion UIW really handling things there in the fourth and just lost all the steam through the fifth and the sixth zero runs at all and it's AM very view just slowly chipping that their way back into the game going after the first pitch and fouling it off is Tyron Norris. 
have now scored five runs here in the top of the seventh. Plenty of runs here today from San Antonio. Big cut and miss there from the lefty. Jaden Moreno. Moreno 0 for 1 today. And this one off the mask of Boscarino. So still at 0 and 2 is the count. Tyne run 90 feet away. Go ahead run in scoring position at second base. And in the turf there. One, two count now for Moreno. Jam shot, line drive out to end the sixth inning. To Weldon Cheryl was Moreno's first at bat. Checks a swing, they're going to appeal. They're gonna say he did not go around. Thomas Walkoviak, they're behind Barron's. A little bit tougher spot. Kinda of see if he broke the plane. 2-2, Two -two. inside and low. Now the count runs full. Tyron Norris, who started off the inning, is on deck. The 3 2. That one is low. Ball four. The fifth walk surrendered by Incarnate Word this inning. Back to bases loaded. One out now for Tyron Norris. Good block there by Boscarino. Really had to get out of his stance as Barron's pulled the slider. One out. -oh. Pulled outside. Two and zero oh count now for Norris. One for two today. Has scored twice and has reached three of the four times. Last time on a walk to start this inning, and he sees a three and zero oh count. Nowhere to put him. Nine run, just 90 feet away. All take there. Count goes to three and one. Deep breath from Barron's pitch, right at the knees for strike two. The count runs full. Weiss at third, Burroughs at second, Moreno at first. This one lined into right field, base hit. That will tie the game. Burroughs will score from second. It gets away from Sutcliffe trying to score from first. Is Moreno and into third safely is Tyron Norris. Prairie View A&M has come all the way back from 10 down and now leads 18 to 16. From this point on, nobody can ever count this team out because that is one heck of a comeback. Unlucky there in the outfield, missing that one and give them time to add on about two more runs. 
but you also just can't discount the quality at bats that this team has had this afternoon. Count even at one and one now to Garland Parker. One for two today. Has scored twice. Walked his last time up this inning. Fouls it off himself. Also has two RBIs. guys. Infield now in, trying to cut the run. Just 90 feet away. A one high and tight there from Barron's. The count runs full once again. This one hauled off, fouled away. Three, two. That one runs inside. Another walk for UIW this inning. It's the sixth surrendered. Two by Mendoza to start the inning. Two by Slotzhauer. Two by Behrens. And there's only one out been recorded here this inning. In the top of the seventh. Already eight across for the Panthers. And will be the fourth Cardinal pitcher. Trying to get them out of trouble. Prairie View A&M with their first lead. Another Cardinal pitcher when we return. See, Home Quote Explorer lets you easily compare home insurance options so you can get what you need without overpaying. Yeah, we spent a lot on this kitchen. Oh, yeah, really high-end stuff. Sorry, that's our ghost. Yeah, okay. It's more annoying than anything. Too bad there's mold behind the backsplash. Yep, there's mold. Well, then, let's see if we can save you some money with Progressive. Guess how much I originally paid for this fireplace? 23 bucks. Materials and labor. Just ignore him. You got bamboozled. Choice Hotels is a family of brands that helps you get the most for your money so you can be any traveler you want to be. You could be a free hot breakfast hero in a comfort hotel. Yes! That's how you waffle! A romantic weekend escaper at a Cambria hotel. Or Mr. Get the Party Started. Hey! Be a pool lounger. Or a big room relaxer. With 22 brands and the best value for your money, Choice Hotels has a stay for any you. Stay twice and get a free night when you book direct at choicehotels.com. Gotta get the corners. Live. Fourth Cardinal pitcher used this very inning. They have not been able to find the strike zone, have given up six walks and have turned into eight runs. And now Weston Walls will try to limit the rest of the damage done here in the top of the seventh. Walls, a 6'5", 185 senior from Denver City, Texas, went to Cisco Junior College before making his way to UIW. So far this season, 14 innings pitch has given up 14 hits, seven runs, seven of those earned, and also has clocked 12 strikeouts so far this season. Appeared yesterday as he came in for EJ Garcia. Closed out that one for his first save of the season. One inning and going on the first pitch, sliding safely without a throw. Boscarino decided to pump fake and make sure they didn't give up the run from third. So Parker on the defensive indifference, moves to second. Infield drawn in once again. John Lawson 
Stays off that pitch from Walls. One one count, one out. High chopper to Cowan, and it's over his head. That'll score both runners. It's the first collegiate hit for John Lawson at Prairie View A&M. He gets two RBIs, and they have put up 10 runs here in the seventh to make it a 20 to 16 game. Got to hand it to him. All well deserved. And, uh, I mean, still a chance to come back for UIW. It's not out of hand yet, but it's going to be up to Weston Walls to command this. First pitch in for a strike now to Lee Allen Jr. Singled earlier this inning. That one across four strike, quickly down 0 and 2 is Allen. That one's low. Look at this inning for Prairie View A&M. 10 runs on five hits, one error. Only one out so far this inning. UIW has walked six batters. Have used four pitchers. Weston Walls trying to fill up the strike zone as much as possible. Tough game. And, uh, you know, it's better to get those tough games out of your system early on before you move into season. I think it's a, a case of thinking you got it in the bag. Got a lot of cushion, and then this Panther team comes back and handles business. I think the last time we saw a score in the 20s was UIC, except it was on the flip side. UIW put 22 to their seven. Grounder to second. Cowan Fields throws to second. The out is at second. Relay not in time to complete the double play. So a fielder's choice for Lee Allen Jr. Keeps things alive. Four, six put out of John Lawson. Gets us to our nine hole hitter, Isaac Davila. Has reached the last two times. Once on an error and was one of the many walks off and running, hit and run. Snared there by Hernandez. Sidearm throw in time to beat Davila. But plenty of damage done by Prairie View A&M here in the top of the seventh. They double their score from going down by six to up by four. Time to stretch after that long half inning here in San Antonio. Choice Hotels is a family of brands that helps you get the most for your money so you can be any traveler you want to be. You could be a free hot breakfast hero in a comfort hotel. Yes! That's how you waffle! Mr. This Script got a plot twist at a Radisson Hotel. A business big leaguer. Go for key. Even the ultimate pool float inflator. With 22 brands and the best value for your money, Choice Hotels has a stay for any you. Stay twice and get a free night when you book direct at choicehotels.com. Got to get the corners. Question, what would you get with almost 750 bucks? Easy. I, I'd buy a, a smartwatch like that guy. Makes sense. Use that GPS for your poor sense of direction. Excuse me? My grandfather was a homing pigeon. My internal compass is genetic. Must have skipped a generation. Uh, I'm a walking GPS. Okay, which way is north? Okay, that's up, not north. I should get the watch. Switch to Progressive and you could save hundreds to spend on whatever you dream up. Lives.
Victor Mendoza now has a lead to work with for Prairie View A&M as they put up a double digit number in the top of the seventh. Something that UIW has done before. Did it twice versus UIC. Has scored each of the first four innings, but has been held scoreless in the bottom of the fifth and bottom of the sixth. Seven, eight, nine, due up at the plate for Incarnate Word. Ryder Hernandez, Tyler Cowan, and Weldon Sherrill. It's been a long game. Should have given us a little bit extra time to stretch a little more in that seventh inning stretch. But you know what? It's been a lot of back and forth. At least we're seeing a lot of offensive power happening here. There's a deep shot into left, back at the wall. Off the wall is Ryder Hernandez. A good start trying to pump some life back into this home team. A leadoff double for the Cardinal third baseman. That's pretty much how it's going to have to be this entire inning. They want to stay in it. They got to start putting up some big hits. Second hit today for Hernandez. And the bat is passed to Tyler Cowan. One for three today. Has reached base safely twice. First two out of the zone there for Cowan. Three straight out of the zone for Mendoza. Weldon Cheryl on deck. Is one for one with a sack fly and two walks. And walked on four straight is Tyler Cowan. So the first two reach here in the bottom of the seventh kind of the mentality of both of these teams. The identity is rooted in the fact that they are gritty guys. Never say die to anyone on this roster. Most of these guys have been counted out there in high school, have to go the junior college route. Even some of the guys that were transfers from four-year universities did not see a lot of playing time had to rebuild their confidence here at the level and a reason why none of these games are really safe down the stretch as anything and everything is on the table when it comes late into the ball game right I mean the men mental toughness required to be a a college athlete is something else, but then you throw transfer portals in there, constant movement, different coaches, having to prove yourself time and time again, having to go back and build confidence. I mean, that just creates a different kind of resilience. And that's something that, you know, regardless of what happens this season, they're going to be able to take with them into their lives and apply that same recipe and formula to get success in their careers and in daily life. But until then, the pressure is on here for UIW. And again, these are the make or break moments that they might just might remember forever. Happy making the pitcher and coach for the Panthers with a quick visit with Victor Mendoza. Six straight out of the zone after the Ryder Hernandez double. Cheryl has walked. Two times and is a ball away from getting a free pass for the third time today. Would turn it over to the top of the lineup with Cameron Kaylee waiting on deck. And that is eight straight out of the zone for Mendoza. 
And just like that, UIW has loaded them up back to the top of the order. Exactly where they want to be. Twenty walks between the two teams. Twelve have been given out by Prairie View A and M. Eight by Incarnate Word. Twenty-seven runs between the two. Thirty-six runs total. And a high pop up into right field. Drifting back and making the catch on the warning track. Everyone moves up 90 feet. So a sack fly for Cameron Kaylee. Almost tied it up with that swing. Close, but no cigar. Still a chance to add some damage here. Only single out on the board. Able to push a run across as Cowan moves to third. Cheryl moves to second. And Hernandez did score. Sterling Sutcliffe fouls uh, 1 0 away. Popped out into foul territory his first time up after coming in for Rob Liddington Jr. That one low. 2 1 count now to Sudcliffe. 11th game he's played in. He started six for UIW. This one is a no doubter. Watch out, Prairie View AM bus. It about put a hole in the window. <laughs> Instead, it's a tie ball game. 20 apiece off the three run shot from Sutcliffe. His fourth homer of the year. Ninth, 10th, and 11th RBI. And we're back at square one. Head coach Schatzberger giving quite the pep talk between the last inning, or at the bottom of the seventh rather, and, and this one. And it must have worked because the last two innings, zero runs. And then right here in the seventh, four. Sometimes you just need the, that special sauce, the magic words to get it going. And again, still only an out. Still time to do more damage. Held off by Dalton Beck. UIW is eighth in the country when it comes to runs scored. Having 130 as this one is inside the line. A fair ball for Beck. And he is into second base, standing up. His first extra base hit of the day. Another multi-hit game for Dalton Beck. And the go-ahead run is in scoring position. Good work for him there. First a grand slam and then another hit that gets UIW into scoring position. It's a good comeback. And and these are the moments that they're going to face in season. Another first pitch hack there from Ryan Scott. Foul the way. It's about learning to dig deep and pull your way back when you have to. Oh, one for Scott. This one, Chopper. Fielded by Davila at short. And the ground ball is a 6-3 put out for Scott. So two outs. Beck stays there at second. Luca Boscarino at the plate. Second at bat for the Canadian. Popped up to second base. His first time up had come in for J.D. Gregson, who is three for three today. 
and scored four runs. Had come in in that sixth inning for his first at bat. Back when this game was at a 10 run lead for UIW. Fly out to right will end the seventh for UIW, but they are right back to even Steven with Prairie View A&M. They score four in the seventh. Going to the eighth, a 20-20 tie between Prairie View A&M and Incarnate Word. Wide open spaces and lots of room to play. That's Cachata Casino Resort. Escape to Cachata and play the largest and most spacious gaming floor in Southwest Louisiana. With thousands of the newest, most exciting slots, over 55 table games, live bingo and off-track betting, plus beautiful hotels, award-winning cuisine, and the number one golf course in Louisiana. It's Louisiana's largest casino resort and Louisiana's best bets. Jersey Mike slices your sub right in front of you, see? The slicer, the meat and cheese, it has a rhythm. This is the rhythm of a slice. Sliced right in front of you. It's the Jersey Mike's thing. A sub above. Sixteenth meeting all time between the Cardinals and the Panthers. UIW 14 and 1 versus Prairie View AM and have won the last 10 matchups. Last year were much more low scoring. A 5-4 to four win for the Cardinals on the road against the Panthers. And then a 6-2 to two win for UIW at home just a year ago. But it is a series that UIW has put up plenty of runs in, averaging over 12 runs per game when facing the Panthers. First pitch off the glove of Walls, barehanded by Cheryl, and it'll be another hit for Michael Smith Jr., his fifth of the day, his third single. And the go-ahead run is aboard for the Panthers. Cardinals have scored double-digit runs in 11 of the 15 meetings. They had a streak of eight games from 2016 to 2011, where they scored 10 or more runs, it ending last year. Only one game, Prairie View A&M has scored 10 or more runs versus UIW. And the final for that game, Katie, it was 26 to 12, a win for the Cardinals at Prairie View A&M. Right now, we got a 2020 game trying to play some small ball as Garrett Weiss fouled off at the plate. So a 2 1 count. It's going to require 2020 vision and focus from Weston Walls here so we can command this ball and stop the bleeding. Another bunt attempt. This one, two walls. He just goes to first, and the sack bunt is successful. So one out. Michael Smith Jr. moves to second. Go ahead, run in scoring position. Michael Burrows at the plate, has singled each of his last two at-bats. Slider in for strike one. Fastball splitter 
and slider mix for Weston Walls. Takes a look back at Smith, delivers home. Outside corner, just misses. Evens the count at one and one. Make it two and one as that one misses upstairs. Most runs UIW has scored in this series is 31. They had a 31 to two win on April 10th of 2018 here at Sullivan Field. The very next week was when they scored 26 and gave up 12 at Prairie View A&M. 2-2, two -two. swing and a miss, strike three. Weston Walls puts Burroughs down. Second time he's gone down on strikes. It's the first strikeout for Weston Walls. And they're one out away from putting Another zero back on the board. Much needed shut down inning if they can get it. Check swing, the appeal. They're gonna say he did go around. Thomas Walkviak saying Jaden Moreno went around. Oh for one today with a walk. 0-1, inside to the lefty. Ewing count out, one and one. Jaden Marino, a junior from Pensacola, Florida. Transferred in from Bishop State Community College. Swings through the off speed. One, two count. One for five coming into today, getting his sixth appearance of the season is Moreno. One, two, grounder to second. Cowan fields it, short throw over to Scott and the shutdown inning they needed. So no runs on one hit. They leave him stranded in scoring position to the bottom of the eighth. All tied up at 20. Question, what would you get with almost 750 bucks? Easy, I, I'd buy a, a smartwatch like that guy. Makes sense, use that GPS for your poor sense of direction. Excuse me? My grandfather was a homing pigeon. My internal compass is genetic. Must have skipped a generation. Uh, I'm a walking GPS. Okay, which way is north? Okay, that's up, not north. I should get the watch. Switch to Progressive and you could save hundreds to spend on whatever you dream up. I'm Michael Sarah, and human skin is my passion, which is why I developed this. Sarah V. My cream. Oh, you didn't know? <laughs> Sarah V. Developed with Michael Sarah. You like? <laughs> There's its perfect crossover opportunity. Lives. Now gone over four hours in this contest. A 2020 game between Prairie View A&M and Incarnate Word. The sunset starting to fall. 
here in San Antonio. Sam Tormos at the plate to start the eighth inning. Six, seven, eight, due up for the Cardinals. They've made it through the hottest part of the day. Now it's just maintaining that focus and keeping that energy. Just missed there on the fastball. 2-1 count now for Tormos. Still looking for the first hit today. 0 for 4. Has scored twice. Walked once, reached on an error, and struck out three times. And he walks for the second time. The go-ahead run is aboard as Prairie View A&M surrenders walk number 13 today. 21 total walks between both pitching staffs. So Ryder Hernandez, who led off the seventh with a double at the plate. Quick pickoff there from Victor Mendoza. Showing bump, pulling back quickly. Back pick late. 1 0 count now to Hernandez. Two for four, has scored twice. Reached an extra time on a walk. Tried to get the bunt down, he did. They're actually gonna say it was a foul ball. It hit him while he was in the box. So a one one count now as Hernandez backtracks. Tough day for everyone on the mound. Another high fastball, 2 1. No matter which way this one goes, it's going to be a tough loss. Showing bunt. He gets it down to the pitcher. Mendoza is going to try to go to second. It is in time. So the sack bunt was down, but unsuccessful as it was right back to the pitcher. And Victor Mendoza smartly got the lead runner. So Tormos cut down on the 1-6. Hernandez at first on the fielder's choice. And they almost picked him off. Sliding back safely just in time was Ryder Hernandez. The entire Panthers dugouts thought he was done. And that one not hung on by Jaden Moreno. Hernandez has quite a bit of speed. Two for two on base stealing last year. Check swing from Cowan. He did go around. 0-1. Oh, Cowan today. One for two. This one hard hit, but foul. Cowan has scored once, has driven in two, and reached on a walk and hit by pitch. Quickly down two strikes. Mendoza delivers home. Fastball up and out. One two count now. Weldon Cheryl on deck. One for one, three walks, a double, and a sack fly. That one almost hit Cowan. Well, 
Left on right. The righty Mendoza comes set, delivers home. Another inside fastball. So the count runs full. See what Cardinals want to do offensively here. 3 2. Hernandez at first, Cowan at the plate. Back is Hernandez. Much shorter lead. Mendoza has shown a good pickoff move. Going is Hernandez. That one drilled, but foul. That will end up on the softball field. Cowan cranked it, but was out in front. Wind still blowing from right field to left. Another payoff from Mendoza. Running is Hernandez. This one is fair. Hernandez on his way to third. The throw is late. And it's a single for Tyler Cowan. Runners are at the corners. Exactly where the cards want to be right now. It's all about that timely hitting here. Second single of the day for Tyler Cowan. And a pinch hitter is going to be Tony DeJesus coming in for Weldon Sherrill. So Tony DeJesus to the plate. Guy from... San Diego played his high school ball here in San Antonio at Central Catholic. Fake steal there from Callen, found it away is Tony DeJesus. Last year hit 250. Six RBIs on 13 hits. Sidelined with a little bit of an injury. His eighth appearance this year. Hit and run with Cowan on the move. And quickly down 0-2 is to Jesus. So far this season, 5 for 18. Has scored five runs. Has driven in seven. Three of those on a three-run home run. Homer came against Alcorn State in game two on Saturday. 0-2. Running as Cowan, the throw to second. He's going to play pickle. Hernandez is in safely. Cowan is back to first safely. The double steal is successful by UIW. And Ryder Hernandez showed off his speed going from third to home on the double steal. Panthers caught looking a bit, trying to figure out what the next move is. Lucky to get out of that pickle. Doesn't happen often. Great situational baseball there by UIW on the execution. Davila froze there at shortstop. And they didn't even get an out of Cowan. So 2-2 now. The lead is back in UIW's favor. 21-20. The count runs full to DeJesus. Off is Cowan, the hit and run. This one into right field for a base knock. Cowan trying to go to third. The throw is offline. Runners are at the corners once again. Back-to-back -back singles for Cowan and Tony DeJesus in his pinch-hitting role. And head coach Antoine Riggins is going to make the move to the pen. Victor Mendoza will end his day pitching three innings, giving up five hits, five runs will be 
responsible for the runners at first and third. We'll get you the new Panthers pitcher when we come back. A 21-20 game. Cardinals looking for more insurance here in the bottom of the eighth. All the parts you need at the prices you want. Guaranteed to fit every time. So you can keep your ride or die alive. Today, I'm excited um, to show you um, <laughs> um, the... Um, let's dive in. I'm Michael Sarah, and human skin is my passion, which is why I developed this. Sarah V. My cream. Oh, you didn't know? <laughs> Sarah V. Developed with Michael Sarah. You like? There's its perfect crossover opportunity. Live. Coach Riggins is going to make another move to the bullpen. The fifth pitcher they have used today will be a freshman, number 35, Demarius Thompson. He's a right-handed pitcher from Katy, Texas. Went to Sealy High School, and this is his first appearance so far for the Panthers. Put into quite a tight spot, so quite the pressure to be under here early on for one of his first appearances. Thompson, a 60190 right. He will face the top of the Cardinal lineup, starting with Cameron Cayley. And that one, first pitch gets away from the catcher. Coming home is Cowan, head first. Slide is safe. And Tyler Cowan gives them another insurance run. 22 to 20 is our new score. Again, just a tough situation to be in. There's a brand new pitcher here. First throw of his collegiate career. To Marquez Thompson. Sealy Tiger. Able to throw. Strike one to Kaylee now, two and one. Two for four, four RBIs for Cameron Kaylee. And a timeout called by the catcher, John Lawson. Just a quick chat there, making sure everyone's on the same page. Kaylee had the big three-run home run in the third inning, part of their largest scoring inning of six in the third. High pop-up into left field. Daniel Calabrese has come in to pinch run for Tony DeJesus. And that will be the second out. So Sutcliffe back at the plate. Three-run home run his last time up to tie it. And he shoots this one into the right center gap. That one, one hops the wall. Scores Calabrese from second. Sterling Sutcliffe trades spots with Daniel Calabrese. And off the bench, two for three is Sutcliffe. Two extra base knocks and four more ribbies for the senior. Up again are the Cardinals. Question is, can they keep this lead and keep it going? 
23 to 20. They have scored three here in the bottom half of the eighth. Four in the bottom half of the seventh to tie it up after giving up 10 runs in the top of the seventh. Dalton Beck, three for five, has scored three times. The most runs we've seen from them this season, 23. This one gloved by the second baseman. His hat comes off as he makes the throw across. Nothing doing there for Lee Allen Jr. as he completes the 4-3 put out. But UIW reclaims their lead. To the ninth we go, 23 to 20. Three outs away are the Cardinals. Question, what would you get with almost 750 bucks? Easy, I, I'd buy a, a smartwatch like that guy. Makes sense. Use that GPS for your poor sense of direction. Excuse me? My grandfather was a homing pigeon. My internal compass is genetic. Must have skipped a generation. Uh, I'm a walking GPS. Okay. Which way is north? Okay, that's up, not north. I should get the watch. Switch to Progressive and you could save hundreds to spend on whatever you dream up. It's impossible to pick favorites between my horses. But what else? No problem. I like this one. I think he likes me. Rock, paper, scissors for who's on dinner duty? Nice try. I'll get it. <laughs> Need some help? Delicious two ingredient weeknight dinners. Approved. <laughs> Live. UIW. Trying to win their ninth game here at home, their 10th overall. They are 8-1 and one at Sullivan Field so far this season. Have had 16 wins at home each of the last two years. It got dicey for a little bit. They were up 16-6 to six after four. And then... Prairie View A&M, the game chipping away, two in the fifth, two in the sixth, took the lead with a 10 spot in the seventh. And then UIW tied it right back up in the bottom half with four of their own and have reclaimed the lead with three runs in the last half inning. Weston Walls trying to shut things down Five, six, seven, do up with Tyron Norris at the plate. The designated hitter, two for three today, 2 0 count. And a ball away from putting him on is Weston Walls. Tyron Norris has also walked and been hit by a pitch to go along with a single and a double. That went over and across for strike one. Has scored three of the four times he has reached base. Three one, fastball, that does miss. They've been caught thinking that it was ball four a couple times and then have to track back to the box. So the leadoff Panther is aboard to start the ninth. Prairie View A&M looking to stop a five game losing streak. Started out six and one, have lost the last five, including a six one decision versus the Rice Owls where they only had two hits. The only run coming on a solo shot from Tylen Norris. Garland Parker quickly down 0-2. One for two today. Ah! 
Had an RBI double his first time up, a sack fly in the fifth, and then has walked each of his last two trips. Just missing outside was Walls. Borker has also scored three times. Slider brings him up. The Lake strikeout call from now home plate umpire Robert Mays. Gives Walls his second strikeout of the evening and the first out here in the ninth. You can always depend on Weston Walls to come in and slow things down. We've seen some pretty good showings from him so far early on this preseason. Panthers have had a couple Come from behind wins. They were able to fight back versus Alabama State in 10 innings and win 13 to 12. Rallied late to beat Florida A&M 5 to 4. And this could do it. Four, six, three double play. Grant Randall, who just came in the ball game. Shows his defensive skills as they turn a twin killing 4 6 3 double play to end the madness here in March on this wacky Wednesday. UIW moves to 10 and 4 on the year. They win a wild one 23 to 20. And Prairie View AM. Balls to six and seven overall. Katie, what a game. One heck of a score line, no doubt. I mean, uh, almost looking like a different sport here. But uh, the, the point is that both teams fought back at a certain point. Both teams fought back. I think everyone can pat themselves on the back. And I said it earlier, whoever walks away with the win, it's going to hurt forever who loses. 23 runs for UIW on 17 hits. They had two errors. 20 runs for Prairie View A&M. 16 hits, one error for the Panthers. It was a day where both of the pitching staffs could really not find the strike zone. 13 walks for Prairie View A&M. Nine for UIW. But the bats made them pay as well with over double-digit hits for both teams, 33 combined hits between the two, 43 runs, as it now becomes the largest run score combined in this history, the most runs scored by Prairie View A&M versus UIW, the third most scored by UIW against PVAMU. They win their 15th all-time against the Panthers and have now won 11 straight. They're 4-0 against the SWAC this season as they will take on Texas Southern here at Sullivan Field starting on Friday. Prairie View A&M will travel to Las Cruces to take on the New Mexico State Aggies this weekend. Once again, our final score from Sullivan Field, UIW 23. Prairie View A&M 20. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streamed live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN and the Southland Conference. UIW winners on a Wacky Wednesday.